The Radical. Fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, and individual rights. This is The Yaron Brook Show. All right, everybody. Welcome to Yaron Brook Show on this uh, Saturday, April 13th. I am, as you can see, those of you in video, I am back home. Uh, back in our regular uh, studio and uh, looking forward to a you know regular schedule minus uh, minus uh, travel I do have a poll up um, I, I, in terms of uh, the schedule that I foresee going forward so let me let me explain the poll because the poll is not the, the description of the poll is not exactly accurate because uh, I didn't have enough not enough characters in the poll uh, to to lay it out exactly, but uh, I am I am curious about what you guys think. I, I think I'm gonna you know anyway. So um, two options really on the table right now. One is keep the current schedule, which is generally a news roundup at around one or two p.m. East Coast time, and then uh, two evening shows at eight p.m. East Coast time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and another show like today on Saturday. Uh, the, um, the, it, it, the alternative is Tuesday through Friday, Tuesday through Friday, 2 to 4 or 5 p.m. could be, uh, we could go three hours, depending on your questions, depending on the financial support uh, you, you show, so it depends on Super Chats, uh, but we could go until 5 p.m. those days. Uh, and then on Monday... Uh, it would be uh, probably a two o'clock uh, news roundup and a uh, and an eight o'clock seven or eight o'clock uh, interview. So uh, that would be the day I do interviews. Also, just to, just to give you more information about the two to four on every weekday, uh, that show would uh, be comprised of the first hour being a news roundup. That is, we would still keep the news roundup. First hour being the news roundup. Second hour being some more broad topics. So we would actually get more hours of shows this way and more broad topics. So we would be doing four broad topics, not just three like we do right now. And we'd still keep the news roundups every, uh, every day. So there would be five days a week news roundup, uh, but it means no shows on Saturday and uh, no shows uh, in the evening except Monday. So I am curious what you guys think um and uh if uh, if you're watching live uh please consider voting in the poll um as we move through the show all right uh, i was going to do a different topic um and and was planning to do something in economics and i will do that later in the week uh it's not an urgent topic i will cover it but i did uh but on uh, looking through Twitter, where, where you get breaking news, it has become evident that uh, the U.S. and Israel are anticipating an Iranian uh, attack on Israel uh, after midnight Israel time tonight. So right now it is 10 p.m. Uh, in Israel, and the anticipation is that any time, sometime after midnight tonight in Israel, Iran will launch an attack on Israel. The uh, the, the the current uh, the current um, what do you call it? The current uh, projection is the current projection is that uh, Iran is going to launch ballistic missiles and who knows what else? Maybe swarms of drones from Iran. That is, the Iran will use its own territory uh, to attack Israel in spite of the threats. Uh, by and the warning by the Israelis that that would uh, mean that Israel would then strike Iran in retaliation. So uh, uh, you know, as we speak, uh, if you uh, if you look at what's going on, I'll just give you I'll give you a few of kind of just what's happening right now. Uh, Israel has canceled all school for the next couple of days. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. Sunday is a regular school day in Israel. Uh, Saturday uh, is this, uh, Friday and Saturday are the weekend. Sunday is a work day, and it appears that Israel has uh, canceled all school um, uh, on um, on Sunday and and Monday. Uh, Israel is also 
Uh, they've also the demonstrators who have been demonstrating um, for the oust of Netanyahu and for demonstrating against the government have called off all demonstrations in the next few days and urged everybody to go home. The Israeli Ministry of Health is holding an emergency meeting right now uh, around the, uh, to determine levels of emergency operation required given an attack, which they anticipate would result in a large scale, uh, large scale, basically uh, war, but more war uh, in the air than war on the ground. Um, beaches and parking lots around the Sea of Galilee have been closed, at least. Again, and this is all, I, I will say, none of this is 100% confirmed, right? None of this is, uh, is uh, you know, unequivocal. Uh, some of this is, uh, is going to be, you know, fog of war rumors, uh, but it, it, it is no question schools have been closed and uh, preparations are intensified. Uh, last, uh, seeing Netanyahu was heading towards uh, the army military headquarters in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, basically to go with the war cabinet underground and, uh, and and manage whatever happens from there. So the war cabinet, security cabinet, are meeting uh, after midnight tonight. Um, so uh, uh, you know all of this is is going on right now. Also interesting. Um, are, the, uh, are the signals that uh, the United States is sending, right? The United States is sending clear signals that it will and has been uh, for a while um, that if you, uh, that if you on, um, if you on attacks Israel, the United States will stand behind uh, Israel. It is now also saying, at least it seems that way, it is now also saying that the uh, that the United States will shoot down whatever it can uh, that is launched out of Iran. That is that the uh, U.S. Navy and its air defense systems in um, in Jordan, Syria, and Iraq will participate. That is, will defensively shoot down Iranian missiles targeted at Israel. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, again, you know, U.S. officials have said that they expect an attack early hours of Sunday, uh, and uh, they expect it to be large-scale, launched by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard in Iran and by Iran-backed groups uh, in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. So you could see Hezbollah uh, participate, which means the entire north of Israel, really almost all of Israel, is in target, this is going to be a major, major test of the Israeli defense uh, systems. Um, let's see, uh, as we said, Israeli, uh, Israeli officials, I, I think I said the other day, Israel has a squadron of its Air Force F F-35 uh, in the air constantly. I suspect there's more than one squ squadron in the air right now. Um, and um, uh, let's see what else is happening. Uh, there are guidelines, intense guidelines as of tonight in terms of uh, mass gatherings. Mass gatherings are not allowed uh, uh, or, or heavily discouraged uh, with the anticipation that bombs are going to be falling from the sky. Uh, let's see. Uh, suppose the U.S. Defense Secretary uh, in a phone call today with the Israeli Defense Secretary, uh, again, reiterated that uh, the United States would stand by uh, Israel and uh, would supposedly would participate in, um, in uh, dropping, uh, dropping any missiles launched against Israel from uh, the sky. Um, the United States has a number of aircraft up in the air, monitoring aircraft, uh, intelligence aircraft up in the air around Iraq and Jordan. Jordan, just a few minutes ago, suspended uh, all uh, commercial air space, air, air, air flights, commercial flights in its airspace. Um, if you look at a map, uh, anything Iran launches is uh, likely to go over 
Jordan. Uh, they don't want to get any planes uh, stuck uh, on, uh, in the way. Um, Israeli intelligence officials still believe that tonight's attack by Iran will primarily target military and security infrastructure, not, not civilian infrastructure. And they think it will primarily be focused on northern Israel, um, but it would avoid civilian population centers. We will see. We will see, particularly from Hezbollah. Hezbollah is not exactly in the past be moderate. And it's not clear how accurate these missiles actually are, particularly the ones flown all the way from Iran. Uh, you know, what is the level of accuracy? Uh, of uh, these ballistic uh, ballistic missiles. So uh, they're anticipating um, hundreds, maybe thousands of missiles launched uh, from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Um, but you know, this could all be a false alarm. I have, uh, uh, you know, I've been arguing that I don't expect Iran to launch from Iran because uh, I think they fear the retaliation, but maybe, maybe they're more suicidal than I think that is obviously quite possible. The other thing that seems to be happening is that Israel seems to be jamming uh, a GPS. Uh, this is something the Russians have done in Ukraine. Um, and uh, this is something that uh, most drones and, and, uh, and many ballistic missiles use GPS in order to navigate, in order to figure out where they are and where they're heading and what their targets are. Uh, Israel seems to be have the cap capabilities, and uh, the Russians certainly have, and Israel, I think, has the capabilities um, to uh, uh, to jam uh, the incoming incoming GPS. So another reason why it's not clear that even if the Iranians are targeting only military installations, that they would actually only hit uh, military installations, uh, military installations. All right, um, so that's a quick overview. I'll, you know, we're, we're, I'm keeping track of, to the best that I can, of what is actually uh, actually uh, happening. Um, the uh, Iranian, the Jordanian airspace is closed from 11 o'clock uh, local time, which is about consistent with this idea that something happens after midnight. Uh, and um, yeah, so you know, again, we will follow this and see. If, uh, if this is actually going to happen, or if the Iranians decide it's not worth it, uh, how, how to really, how to really uh, navigate and tell. Um, so that's kind of the, the, what is going on on the ground right now. We'll talk a little bit about more broader and implications and everything else uh, in a minute. Let me just remind you, uh, okay, so this is the, the, uh, the poll. The poll uh, is about two different options. Uh, for future Iran book shows. Uh, one is to keep it the way it is right now. That is generally five days a week, a, a 1 to 2 p.m. East Coast time news roundup. And then uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 8 p.m. East Coast time, a, um, a, a broader topic for discussion. Uh, and also Saturday at 3 p.m. Like, like today. The alternative is to shift to 2 to 4 or maybe even 2 to 5 depending on the topic and depending on the number of questions we get, uh, basically uh, Tuesday through Friday. Uh, and that will include an hour, uh, first hour of news roundup, and then the second hour of some other broader topic. And again, that could easily go uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, two and a half, uh, three hours on those shows. Uh, and on Monday, uh, at 2 p.m., um, 2 p.m. news roundup, and then an evening uh, interview. We'll try to have an interview um, interviews uh, um, interviews every week. We, we, we will see. So uh, that is uh, that is the poll. I hope everybody votes. Uh, so the more people vote, the more meaningful the result is. Uh, feel free to uh, you know vote either way, and uh, we will see. This would begin. This would actually begin uh, this week. So uh, if if I make the change. I would make it uh, actually make it uh, this uh, this week. All right, uh, as I said, uh, as we uh, said in the beginning of the show, uh, Iran is thought to be on the verge of launching a uh, massive, um, a massive uh, missile strike and drone strike on uh, on Israel. All the signs point to it happening 
in uh, over the next few hours. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that is, uh, all the signs are indicating that that's actually going to happen. That includes, uh, that includes, uh, um, I- Israel's own, uh, civil defense. It includes, uh, it telling people to stay home. It includes shutting down the schools. Uh, but it also includes Jordan, uh, closing out its airspace and, um, and, and just generally Israel being on super high alert and the United States uh, with whatever assets it has in the Middle East in terms of uh, air defense systems uh, are all on high alert in anticipation of an Iranian strike. What is What would an Iranian strike mean? I mean, uh, you know, I have to admit that, God, I hate to say it because I, I know how it's going to sound, but I have to admit that I, I actually think that an Iranian strike is... Uh, it, you know, is in the long run a good thing. Uh, that is, it will finally provide the uh, the Israelis with the opportunity, excuse, cover, and maybe even international support to actually strike at the Iranians where it counts. Uh, an Iranian strike on Israel would actually, particularly from Iran, uh, would allow Israel to go after Iranian, uh, the Iranian nuclear program. Uh, the Iranians must be very confident about their ability to, uh, you know, to, to, to prevent such a strike. Uh, but they, they must be very, very confident in that uh, to, to launch a strike against Israel today. Uh, but it's, it's uh, uh, you know, this is this is opened up. It opens up kind of the feasibility of a significant, massive uh, uh, strike on uh, their nuclear capabilities, on, uh, you know, what I would do, and I think what Israel would do, and this Ukraine's, the Ukrainians would celebrate this, is uh, destroy the drone manufacturing capability of the Iranian regime, take out every drone manufacturing uh, facility they have, uh, it would provide Israel with a reason to destroy their ballistic missile production capability, again, their production capability, and maybe whatever they have on the ground. Uh, now, it, none of that will be easy. Uh, Iran is far away from Israel. But supposedly, uh, Isra- uh, Israeli planes um, are in a position to be able to uh, make it to Iran and back without refueling. I don't know what kind of load they can carry, what kind of bombs they can carry to do that, but supposedly they have been retrofitted to be able to make that trip there and back. Um, But, uh, you know, this, I think Israel has the missile defense capabilities, uh, particularly with regard to ballistic missiles that the Iranians might send, to knock those out of the sky. I'm less sure of what Israel, how, how many of the missiles Israel can knock out of the sky launched on it by Hezbollah. Uh, it's just, they could be very well just overwhelmed by the numbers. And of course, um, it, it's just not clear that Israel has just enough uh, 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 anti, uh, anti-missile capabilities to stop everything launched uh, against it. Um, so. Uh, taking out uh, Iranian, if, if this ultimately leads to taking out of the Iranian nuclear capabilities, if this ultimately leads to th- retarding the Iranian uh, military uh, industrial complex, if you will, significantly, uh, then this will be a massive, unbelievable strategic mistake by the Iranians and a huge opportunity for Israel to actually do what it should have done anyway, what it should have done a long time ago, years ago. Uh, but, uh, but it, it, you know, this Iran will uh, open it up so that, uh, so that this could, uh, could, could actually get done. Um, uh, you know, Iran will then launch more missiles and unleash Hezbollah even more aggressively. So this could turn into a pretty prolonged uh, conflict. Uh, I, I don't think Israel would sit back if Hezbollah launches significantly. I think Israel would enter into Lebanon and try to drive Hezbollah to the north. I also think that if Hezbollah launches massive strikes against Israel, Israel will um, attack Hezbollah where it hurts, which means in Beirut, 
at its headquarters. Uh, you know, if, I, I think Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah right now, is in a deep, 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 deep bunker somewhere underneath Beirut uh, so that nothing can touch him. I think he knows exactly um, exactly what, uh, you know, what is going to... Uh, uh, you know what is going to what is going to actually happen? He knows that that he is a target. He has a a big bullseye on his back if Hezbollah attacks Israel. So uh, again, this is going to be this can be uh, you know broad regional. Uh, uh, I mean, if the Iranians then decide uh, to attack. Um, to attack uh, American military bases in the Middle East, which they might, um, are, uh, uh, you know, are also, uh, that will also uh, give the United States an excuse to participate in any counterattack against uh, Iran. Now, all of this is a kind of best-case scenario that Israel responds in this way. It is quite possible that the Americans will tell the Israelis to hold back not to respond, to let it pass, uh, particularly if Israel knocks down most of the missiles and there's not a lot of damage. Uh, it, it could be that the United States pressures Israel into not broadening the conflict. Uh, it, you know, for some reason, people value stability uh, as if stability is some uh, virtue, particularly when the stability means the continued existence of evil in the world, continued existence of evil regimes in the world. Um, Okay, just so, just so you know, uh, well, just another piece of news that just struck. Not surprising. This is um, this is was pretty clear to me. But the cabinet meeting that Israel is uh, the Israeli war cabinet meeting that Israel is putting together um, after midnight is is not going to be in the uh, prime minister's office, where the office is in uh, prime minister's office in Tel Aviv, but actually in what's called the hole, uh, the hole, which is a deep, deep, deep bunker uh, in the middle of, of uh, military installation in Tel Aviv. Um, I have, you know, somewhere I have been, I've been in that hole. So, um, uh, but that, you know, a, a, a very, a very old version of that hole. It's, it's, I'm sure it's uh, dramatically modernized and I think they might've moved it uh, since I was there. But anyway, um, they're taking this very, very seriously. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. It's it's not the most convenient thing, um, not the most convenient thing to do. Um, you know, just to be clear, because we have at least one Iranian sympathizer who's just jo joined the chat. Um, Iran has no rights here. Iran is the initiator force. Iran has been the initiator force for decades. Iran, uh, the Iranian regime is unequivocally uh, an evil regime that should be eliminated and should have been eliminated years ago, decades ago. Iran has no right to self-defense given its inherent illegitimacy and the evil that it inflicts on its own people, never mind the evil it has inflicted on the rest of the Middle East by funding Hezbollah and Hamas and Islamic Jihad and every single one of Israel's enemies the Iranians have been at war with Israel for decades, uh, and uh, uh, the only reason they have not uh, they have not suffered even more than they have is because Israel has been restrained primarily by uh, repeated uh, uh, American administrations. Uh, you know, going back to Bill Clinton, uh, George W. Bush, uh, and uh, and Obama, and Trump, and now Biden have all reined Israel in whenever Israel has wanted to retaliate against the Iranians uh, for the evil. Iran has no right of self-defense, no right of self-defense, um, because, uh, because of its nature as an evil regime. Uh, evil regimes have no rights, period. Evil regimes are illegitimate regimes. It should not exist. You are, the Iranian regime should not exist, and it should not exist for one simple, straightforward reason. It should not exist because it, it is a massive, unequivocal violator of its own people's rights. And of course, it is a massive promoter of war and violence, uh, the worst kind of wars, the worst kind of violence all over the Middle East, from, uh, from Syria to Iraq to, uh, uh, to Lebanon uh, to Israel. 
So, um, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, I, I don't expect this, but one can hope that whatever Iran does tonight is the beginning of the end of the Iranian regime, that the mistake is a massive strategic mistake, and Iran is, this is the opportunity finally for the United States and for Israel to end end uh, the Iranian regime. If you, you, you know, this was a, a call made by Leonard Peikoff right after 9-11 to end uh, the Iranian regime. It was a call made by Leonard Peikoff actually also in 1989, I believe, with the Salman Rushdie fatwa to end the Iranian regime. Well, it's time. And maybe, maybe, maybe the Iranians are going to give everybody the excuse to do it. The excuse to do it. So, uh, uh, we will see. Uh, it is, though, scary, right? It is scary, particularly um, for anybody who has family in Israel, for anybody who has uh, uh, loved ones in Israel. Uh, it is a very scary time. Uh, my parents, my sister, my brother, I'd say are all, if, if civilian areas are targeted, are all in the, what you'd call the, the sweet spot for a uh, Hezbollah, you know, within Hezbollah range, very easy uh, in the in the northern uh, part of Israel. So, um, a, a massive Hezbollah attack on Israel that includes civilian population centers could be truly devastating. Um, it could be truly devastating. But we will see. And of course, uh, again, that Israel does have the capacities. And we'll focus those capacities, I think, primarily on on uh, protecting civilian uh, civilian uh, parts. You know, there's also vast civilian infrastructure. But you know, again, we will see we will see uh, what is happening. Uh, one of Freeman says the Iranian regime is illegitimate. Absolutely, it's illegitimate. It has no sovereignty. You you gain sovereignty from the protection of your citizens' rights. Israel is a sovereign country because it basically protects the rights of its citizens. Iran is not a sovereign country because it does not protect the rights of its citizens. It indeed is dedicated, dedicated through and through to the violation of the rights of its own citizens. Interestingly enough, and I don't think unrelated, this is very related. News reports today out of Iran, news reports today out of Iran suggests that the morality police, the Iranian morality police is out in force in Tehran. Um, to control, to control, right, the massive threat of women who are not covering their hair. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it, it, at the same time as Iran is, uh, seems to be uh, any minute now about to launch a massive attack on Israel, the Iranian regime is launching a massive attack of its own on its own women, and uh, so uh, the, 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 uh, the morality police is out in force. The Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, any country that has a supreme leader who is also a religious figure is an illegitimate country. I think that is by, is an illegitimate regime, is an illegitimate gov government. I think by definition, by definition. Uh, so Khamenei uh, uh, said, um, uh, I guess yesterday, uh, that mandatory hijab laws must be enforced at all costs, including the cost of the lives of the women who are not wearing the hijab. That is, their lives are forfeit because they show a strand of hair. This is the Iranian regime. This is the barbarism, the primitivism, and the illegitimacy of the Iranian regime. Right. This is... This is the uh, disgusting nature of, uh, of this regime. I mean, this is just one little element of it. Uh, and, um, uh, and, he, and this is, uh, and, and uh, you know, we will see, we will see. Maybe, maybe, maybe is, it is taking the first small suicidal step uh, on the way to, uh, to its uh, eradication. So... Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens later tonight. Uh, let me see if there's anything, anything being updated. I'm just watching the uh, news. Uh, I apologize for looking away from the camera, but I'm trying to track news while I'm doing the show. Um, uh, yep. 
just as a side note, Hamas uh, also announced today, and I think, again, this is consistent because Hamas gets m much of its orders from Iran, Hamas announced today that it is rejecting the latest um, Israeli compromise with regard to the hostages and with regard to a, uh, to a ceasefire. So uh, everything's aligning uh, for a significant uh, conf for, for an acceleration of the an intensification of the existing uh, conflict um, uh, conflict around it, Iran has just grounded all planes except for military emergency and special operations uh, over the Iranian capital. So all air traffic over Tehran has just been suspended. So everything looks like. Uh, it is set up for an attack from Iran on Israel by ballistic missile, drone, whatever else they can muster. Um, and it looks like it's happening uh, tonight. Uh, again, uh, it is possible this is all a fake out, but I think it is unlikely. Uh, I think the bigger risk, of course, is whatever Hezbollah does. I think that's a much bigger risk to Israel that... Um, uh, than um, anything the Iranians actually launch. Of course, you know, uh, who knows what else. And uh, the real question now will be, morally, militarily, will Israel launch a retaliation? That is, what will Israel do in retaliation? What will America allow Israel to do in retaliation? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, is this, could this, could this ultimately be the beginning of the end of, uh, of an Iranian regime that has so been dedicated to destruction of human life and destruction of human freedom uh, since 1979. You know, this is a war. I think Iran has been at war with uh, the United States and, and really with Israel since November 4th, 1979. And November 4th, 1979, uh, the uh, Iranian uh, revolutionaries took the U.S. embassy in Tehran hostage um, they held those hostages really until, uh, when was it, January of 1981. Um, this is when uh, Ronald Reagan was inaugurated as, as president. Um, you, you know, there, was, uh, there were deals with Iran, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a deal to provide Iran with weapons in exchange for hostages. Uh, there were all kinds of other deals with Iran than American administrations. But Iran, from the rise of Khomeini, as supreme leader of Iran in, in uh, 1979. Uh, to this day, Iran has been dedicated to uh, the undermining any interest America had, to killing Americans. In uh, 1983, uh, an Iranian operative, uh, really in the first, in the first uh, terrorist uh, operation of Hezbollah, what became came to be known as Hezbollah, which is just an arm of the Iranians, uh, blew up the American embassy in Beirut. Then a week later, uh, drove a truckload of uh, explosives into the Marine barracks in Beirut, killing, I think it was 244 Marines. Uh, so again, 1983 is, um, uh, is, is the beginning um, is the beginning of this. Somebody's asking, what is the Biden policy? At least as of now, Biden is saying, and everybody in the Biden administration is saying, that they will stand with Israel, uh, and they will, they will use uh, American assets, uh, will use American defensive assets, air defense systems, to knock down anything Iran puts up in the air that is targeted at Israel. We'll see if that actually is the reality. And then what is the policy with regard to what happens at, you know, once Iran strikes? Um, in terms of Israeli retaliation, I don't know. One thing you can be sure of, that Bibi Netanyahu will dither and postpone and wait, as he always does. I mean, God. I mean, he should. the plan should be already in force, in place, and the Israeli response should be within minutes of whatever Iran does. I mean, it should be instantaneous and immediate, um, and there should be no doubt about it. Um, all right. Uh, huh. All right. The equivalent of Air Force One, which is, I guess, the, the military plane in which uh, the leadership sits, just in case uh, the ground is attacked, is 
in flight, I don't remember this ever happening, uh, but it is up in the air, uh, not with Netanyahu, I don't know who's up there commanding, uh, but with some, uh, some obviously alternative command and control center is now uh, in the air. So uh, it's called, uh, yeah, so that's somewhere in, uh, in southern Israel. Right? Um, it, it, it really, I mean, it, it, one thing about this is interesting, it's worth, uh, it's worth thinking about, is um, <laughs> this is this is like war prep in real time. This is like minute by minute, uh, uh, second by second, we're getting updates, play by play, on, on literally what is happening on the ground. This is very unusual. And I have to say, this is only made possible uh, by the existence of Twitter. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Israeli newspapers are behind on the news. They are also covering this. And everything I see on Twitter is then, is then repeated on uh, the Israeli news websites. Uh, so, you know, I, I am getting some verification uh, at some level of this. Whoops, what is frozen here? All right, did we just... Whoops. All right, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, can you hear me? All right, I think we're back. All right, I think we're back. Uh, we'll try to hopefully... Hopefully we can stay online. I am in uh, Puerto Rico, not in uh, not in uh, uh, Jordan or somewhere like, somewhere like that. So hopefully uh, it, 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 we are not <laughs> blanked out by something. We will see. Uh, <laughs> all right. It does look like. Yeah. All right. So I am. I am on. Good. Yeah. So as I said, um, I am keeping. This is kind of minute by minute, uh, second by second, play by play. Of what is going on, and my guess is, uh, my guess is that uh, that this will continue. Um, uh, that this will continue uh, at least through midnight. So it's it's already what is it, 10:30, 10:40 p.m. Um, the expectation is that something will happen in the, in in about two hours, um, and uh, and uh, we will see. All right. Uh, in the meantime, so what? Oh, I, so I was just giving you a quick history. Uh, again, uh, in 1983, the Hezbollah, which, uh, which was then, these were the first actions of the Hezbollah, but uh, completely funded and organized and commanded by the Iranians, blew up the American embassy in Beirut, then blew up the Marine barracks in Beirut, killing uh, over 200 American Marines and uh, embassy personnel, including the uh, CIA chief for, uh, for Lebanon and for the whole district. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Iranians then went on to kill Americans in Lebanon throughout the 1980s, uh, whether they were CIA operatives, whether they were, they were just aid people, whether a, a variety of different people killed. At least one CIA operative was uh, tortured brutally and uh, his uh, body mutilated, and um, uh, ultimately uh, the body was retrieved by the Americans. Uh, I mean, uh, Iran has been waging a war against the United States and Israel again since the regime came to power in 1979. Um, following that, let's see, that was 79. Uh, that was 80, 83. Following that, of course, we had, uh, during the 80s, uh, the attacks. We had Iranian funding a variety of different terrorist attacks around the world. In 1989, we had the famous fatwa against uh, Salman Rushdie uh, for insulting uh, the Prophet Muhammad. And as a consequence, uh, uh, bookstores in the United States carrying Solomon Rushdie's uh, books were firebombed. This is a fatwa from Khomeini. Uh, during the 1990s, Iran uh, helped a variety of different terrorist groups, including terrorist groups associated with the Sunnis. Uh, uh, while Iran is Shiite, Hamas is Sunni, Al-Qaeda is Sunni. That has not stopped Iranians uh, from uh, supporting them. That is, the, the difference between Sunni and Shiite is not as big as the difference between the Islamist agenda and uh, the rest of the Western world. Uh, so Iran has felt comfortable and promoted and, and uh, funded terrorist organizations all over the world. They literally used to have a uh, line item in their budget called terrorism, which they took out after they were sued in the United States and lost the lawsuit in the United States uh, because that used their budget as proof uh, that they were responsible for terrorism and therefore should be uh, held liable uh, for uh, that uh, terrorism. 
Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, 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 so that brings us up. You know, Iran, again, while uh, not directly involved in 9-11, uh, uh, you know, did uh, give a safe harbor to a number of al-Qaeda operatives, including and some of the uh, al-Qaeda operatives during uh, the war in Afghanistan. Uh, and, and throughout the period, uh, Iran uh, had uh, ongoing relations. Of course, Iran uh, supported funded, trained, and armed uh, the, uh, the Shiite insurgents within Iraq that were killing Americans. During the, uh, during the uh, Syrian civil war, the Iranians uh, supported the brutal, brutal, brutal regime of Assad in the killing of his own population and established their own uh, Shiite militias within Syria to attack Americans, to attack ISIS, which is Sunni, which they did not like. And uh, of course, to attack uh, to attack uh, anybody who objected to the actual to the Syrian regime that they were supported, uh, they were supporting. Um, okay, so initial reports again, all speculative. Nothing, uh, nothing is um, nothing confirmed. But initial reports by U.S. and Israeli officials are dozens of Iranian drones airborne heading towards Israel. So this is real, real time. Uh, Israeli airspace has been closed to all commercial flights. This is a first. Um, uh, arriving, departing, and transiting in the country started at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. is still a couple of hours away, so I don't know how the consistent that is with the drone reporting. But... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, scary. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it is scary, and it is going to be. It is going to be interesting to see how this uh, all develops and whether that is confirmed. I, I, I for one, do not have uh, confirmation for uh, the drones. Uh, for the drones being in the air. Um, okay, let's let me close this. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, I know what's causing problems on my browser is that I've got a window open with one of the Israeli newspapers on it, and my guess is that that website is just being uh, just that website is just being um, uh, crushed, right? With uh, uh, with uh, people checking it out to see what's happening. Uh, so uh, I will leave that alone. I've closed that window so we don't get more interruptions. Anyway, the bottom line is. The bottom line is that, um, uh, e e e oh, I, I, I need to add, Iran, of course, uh, funds, supplies, arms, Hezbollah. Hezbollah has been engaged in uh, overt and covert operations against Israel since uh, the bombings of these, the American embassy and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in 1983. Uh, I will add that Hezbollah has often targeted Israeli targets outside of um, outside of Israel. So for example, I was just in Argentina, but famously um, the Hezbollah bombed the Israeli embassy in a Jew an Israeli Jewish community center where dozens and dozens of uh, people were killed. Um, this is probably 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it became very, very clear that that operation was funded by the Iranians. It also became very, very clear uh, that the Kirchner administration of the time um, former president of Argentina was receiving suitcases full of cash from the Iranians to keep silent about the connection between the bombing of the embassies and the Jewish Community Center and the Iranian regime. And the prosecutor, this is not a conspiracy theory, this is all, you can go check this out. The prosecutor who, the, 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 who is about to reveal all this, the connection between Kitsna, uh, the Iranians, the bombing, uh, literally uh, was killed the night before he was about to testify in front of the Argentinian uh, parliament. So this is what, this is six, seven, eight years ago. I, I don't get my timing exactly right. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, but but this, is, this happened uh, years ago. So um, uh, you can, again, look it all up. It made, uh, it made uh, pretty much the newspapers everywhere. Uh, so... Uh, Hezbollah, with the backing of Iran, has been responsible for a complete instability in Lebanon. Lebanon is a dysfunctional state, to a large extent, is a dysfunctional state because 
of Hezbollah. It has, it has an ongoing, uh, it ongoing, um, uh, basically it has an ongoing uh, uh, civil war within uh, within uh, Lebanon. It has been part of, of various Lebanese governments. Uh, the Hezbollah is committed to Sharia law. It is committed to imposing Islamic law on uh, on Lebanon. Lebanon used to be a multi-religious place. Most of the Christians now have left, uh, but it used to be a multi-religious place. And even as it is, Sunni Muslims don't want to be run by Shiites. Christians who still live there don't want to be run by uh, run by a theocracy. And the Druze don't want to be run by a Hezbollah run. So there, there are various factions within Lebanon who do not want Hezbollah to win. The Shiites are not a majority uh, in uh, inside Lebanon, yet they have. It, Lebanon is an interesting country. It has an army, and then it has Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a lot. I mean, it's not even close. More powerful than the Lebanese army. Hezbollah basically runs Lebanon. Lebanon clearly does not want a war with Israel, and uh, various uh, uh, various uh, politicians in Lebanon come out over the last week saying they do not want a war with Israel. And it, Hezbollah is about to launch a massive offensive against Israel from, uh, from Iranian uh, territory. All right, uh, breaking news, some more breaking news. Um, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has just addressed the nation during which he stated they are now prepared for a direct attack by Iran against Israel, with defense systems being deployed and on alert. He further states that they are prepared for any scenario, whether that be defensive, uh, defense, or attack. So, um, so he is, uh, so yes, and Net Netanyahu has actually addressed the people. I don't think he would be addressing the Israeli people if this was not, uh, if this was not imminent, um, given, uh, given that that's a lot of political capital. That's a lot of political capital to deploy if uh, if the attack doesn't actually happen, right? So um, uh, again, Israel closed its airspace um, starting at 1 a.m. Although you know one suspects that it might be closing it even sooner, if it's true that there are uh, inbound uh, drones uh, flying in. Although you know, uh, hard for me to believe um, that uh, that they will actually reach Israel without being intercepted on the way. Um, just again, another another report on, on, on Twitter. Iran has launched dozens of drones towards Israel. It will take around nine hours before they reach Israel and can be intercepted by various air defense systems and fighter jets, uh, both Israeli and Americans. Israeli F-35s have already uh, downed drones, but this is likely only the beginning. So yes, my guess is Israel is already, if the drones are really in the air, Israel is already into the Jordanian airspace and trying to hit those drones um, as close to as close to Iran uh, as possible, and away from Israeli uh, Israeli airspace. Again, if this is true, um, uh, again, uh, none of this has been verified, at least not by me. Um, so, uh, Iran fronts Hezbollah has been a war with Israel through Hezbollah, uh, you know, now for really for uh, for uh, decades. Uh, Iran also funds Hamas. Um, and is responsible for providing them with weapons, with money, um, and uh, one could argue with, uh, uh, with uh, political cover. Uh, Iran uh, is the number one supporter of Hamas. Uh, it's a question whether Iran literally, uh, literally gave a thumbs up for the uh, October 7th operation or did not, whether they knew about it in advance or not. That is, it's very hard to tell. Uh, but it does, uh, but it does seem like, um, um, but it does, uh, but it, it's likely that they knew about it at the very least. Uh, let's see. Yeah, another report, uh, one-way suicide drones likely launched from Iran have been spotted over southeastern Iraq. So if that's southeastern Iraq, they'll be flying over Lebanon, not over Syria. Um, and that, you know, they could talk it anyway in Israel. Israel is such a small country. Uh, you can't track them from here. It will be interesting to see whether the United States deploys its anti-drone and anti-missiles uh, from whatever resources it has on the ground, in the air, 
and on ships uh, in the region. So that, that would be something to watch, or whether it lets Israel handle it. Um, uh, you know, I am not an advocate for the United States intervening uh, and going to war with Iran on, it, on Israel's behalf. I am an advocate for the United States going to war on America's behalf. I do think America has a strong, strong vested interest and a strong, strong uh, reason to go to war with Iran and should have done so after 9-11, should have done so in 1989, should have done so in 1979 when Iran declared war on the United States by taking the American embassy. Uh, Iran was responsible for the bombing of, again, uh, military barracks in Doha in Saudi Arabia in, uh, in the 1990s, which killed, I can't remember, dozens and dozens of American, uh, American troops. Uh, this is on Saudi uh, territory. In other words, the bottom line is Iran has been killing Americans and Israelis, have been supporting the enemies of America and Israel for years and years and years, really for decades now. And uh, Israel and the United States have done little. Somebody in the chat asked, why did Israel bomb uh, the, the Iranian embassy in Syria? They bombed one building in the embassy compound, and they did it because uh, the leaders of uh, the Iranian Republican uh, Revolutionary Guard were meeting there, meeting there to plot violence against Israel. They were meeting there uh, in order to uh, basically, uh, you know, initiate force against the Israelis. These, uh, these leaders are the leaders of the, Isra the Iranian uh, uh, militias and uh, the Iranian command in Syria, in Lebanon, and in Iraq. The, the only purpose of such a meeting is uh, to arrange offensive operations. Why are they meeting in Damascus? Uh, this is a completely legitimate military target for Israel to attack. The fact that it was in a, an embassy compound, who the hell cares? Again, the Iranian regime is an illegitimate regime. There's no such thing as rules of war, rules of diplomacy uh, in, in any case, but certainly when you're dealing with an evil regime, you destroy what you need to destroy. You kill whomever you need to kill in order to protect your own civilians in order to protect your own people from people plotting to destroy you, people plotting to kill you, people plotting to, to, to uh, you know, cause you harm. So Israel was absolutely 100 percent legitimate, le legitimate in bombing uh, the Iranian regime, uh, the Iranian embassy. Um, again, I, I, I continue to, to say, I've said for years and years and years, for 20 plus years now, too little. They should have been bombing Iran itself. They should have taken out the Iranian nuclear facilities a long time ago. Imagine if today, here's the thought experiment, and then I'll go to Super Chat. Imagine if today Iran had nuclear capabilities. Imagine if the fear in Israel right now was that some of the ballistic missiles launched by Iran, or if they're going to be launched by Iran, actually have nuclear warheads. I mean, basically, that's the end of Israel. It doesn't take more than one nuclear bomb to end the state of Israel, right? It's such a tiny place. So imagine, uh, imagine that is true, right? I mean, Israel's, what does Israel do? Does it launch a Does it launch an immediate nuclear attack against Iran? Do we enter World War III? Does it? What does it do with a nuclear warhead on the way, or not knowing if the warhead is nuked or not? There is no way in hell that the United States or Israel can allow Iran to develop nuclear weapons, and the fact that both the United States and Israel have been sitting on their hands while Iran has been developing those nuclear weapons and have done nothing to stop it. I mean, nothing is an exaggeration, but have done little to stop it. Is pathetic. The, the, the fact that Iran is supplying everybody with drones and that the Americans and the Israelis have not taken out their drone factories, that the drone factories have not been eliminated, destroyed. Israel has the intelligence on where these drone factories are. All right, just another, uh, Israeli sources are reporting that the drone swarm, a drone, drone swarm launched from Iran will take approximately eight hours to reach Israel and was detected earlier this afternoon, causing the massive increase in alerts and warnings regarding an Iranian attack. So it, it sounds like the, uh, the drone attack was launched in the afternoon. 
will reach Israel any time after one o'clock, it sounds like. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, from this video from Iraq now of uh, low flying uh, drones, uh, low flying drones, uh, more footage uh, showing Iranian one way suicide drones believed to be Shahad 131 and 136. These are the drones the Russians are using in Ukraine, flying, uh, flying west towards Israel. Um, and uh, interesting if they're flying at low altitudes, that'll make it, of course, more difficult, uh, more difficult for airplanes to knock them down. But, um, but yes, yeah, so, so a, a drone swarm, it looks like, left Iran this afternoon. Um, Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get a um, a statement from the uh, the spokesman of the IDF any any minute now. There will be a statement from them. So it sounds like Israel's on top of this. They know exactly what's happening now. We haven't heard anything about ballistic missiles launched. We haven't heard anything about Hezbollah launching anything. They might wait to until the Israelis are overwhelmed by these uh, by these suicide drones, and only uh, then. Uh, launch hard to tell. This is uh, this is the real uh, the real suspense at this point. Um, th this is the real suspense. Is will Hezbollah launch? Because with the Iranians, you've got eight hours until these drones hit. Uh, with Hezbollah, it's seconds and minutes uh, before they hit. So um, we will see, and we will see again what Israel does in retaliation, if it does anything in retaliation, what Biden allows Israel to do in retaliation, if Biden allows anything in retaliation. All right, um, uh, we have, um, uh, let me remind you of a couple of things and then I'll go to Super Chat quickly uh, while I keep watch on, uh, on uh, what is going on. But again, Iraqi sources are reporting that dozens of additional Iranian one-way suicide drones have crossed into southern Iraq airspace. So, yeah, hard to tell, again, what is true and what is not and, and what it means when they say uh, dozens and is this the previous swarm, is this a new swarm? Very, very, uh, very difficult to tell what exactly is going on. Um, Russia has an alliance with Iran, but Russia will not come to Iran's defense. Uh, it's not that kind of, uh, it's not ki that kind of alliance. Uh, Russia will not come to Iran's defense. This is not going to become a World War III. Uh, it could have if Iran had nukes, but they don't. Uh, so at this point, um, at this point, I hope Israel has already launched an attack on the Iranian uh, because they know Iran's attacking them. I hope this is what I would do, right? Uh, you know, for what it's worth, not worth much because I'm not Israeli's prime minister or defense minister. I would have already launched uh, both uh, ballistic missile and airplanes. I would have sent a squadron of airplanes. To, uh, to attack the Iranian nuclear facilities. I would be bombing um, and, and bombing every known drone factory in Iran who would be up in smoke um, so that when those drones arrive in Israel, if they arrive in Israel, um, every, uh, every single uh, Israel will have already struck back. Turkey will not be involved. Uh, I, I can, I can, I'll bet you anything Turkey does not get involved in this. Uh, Turkey is in no position to get involved in this. Uh, it, is, it will make a lot of declarations and, and, and stuff like that. And Israel, of course, will not fly over uh, Turkey airspace. But Turkey wants its F-16s that the Biden administration has offered them. Uh, Turkey is a member of NATO. Turkey does not want to be kicked out of NATO, which it might be if it gets involved in this on the other side of the United States. Uh, Turkey will stay uh, very far away from this other than from the bully pulpit. It will uh, yell and scream as it always does in support of Israel's enemies. Um, but uh, yep. be, be, be aware of who you get in bed with, uh, NATO and Israel. Israel's had very close relationship with Turkey over, over time. It's always been a mistake. Um, Right. Uh, okay, they're, they're expecting now, I mean, again, caveat, nobody knows anything. They're also expecting um, uh, uh, cruise missiles or ballistic missiles, uh, cruise missiles uh, to be sent from Iran. Of course, the cruise missiles are faster than the drones, so they will be launched after the drones. This is, again, why Israel should be already in, um, 
attack mode and attacking uh, sites and, and attacking whatever they can. Again, I don't know what Israel's capabilities are, so I, I don't know what is possible and what is not in terms of um, uh, defense. But this is happening as we speak, as we speak. All right, remind you, this show, and we've got a lot of people watching right now, well over 200 people are watching right now, uh, this show is made possible through support from uh, listeners like you. So uh, listeners like you make this uh, show possible. It couldn't do it without the financial support uh, that you provide. Uh, you can provide that support in a variety of different ways. One, for those of you watching live, and there are obviously a lot of people watching live right now, getting the news about what's going on uh, from, uh, from the Iran Book Show, uh, is... Um, is that you can uh, use the Super Chat feature to either ask a question, make a comment, or just do a sticker and show your support. With 200 people right now, even $2, $1, $5, $10 of just support is incredibly meaningful and aggregates up to significant amounts. Uh, if you can do that, it is greatly appreciated by me. So uh, uh, thank you for doing that. I, I, you know, Tom just did $100. He says, Yaron, you're awesome. Thank you. I very much appreciate it, Tom. Thank you for the support. That's his third Super Chat ever. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's very generous. So please consider doing a small uh, sticker. If, if you're not listening live to the show, you're missing out because the whole excitement here is that it's live. Um, but if you're not listening live, then you can support the show too uh, through a monthly contribution on Patreon or on your onbookshow.com slash membership or in a variety of, of, of other different way, uh, you know, uh, other platforms. But... Uh, the best of Patreon and uh, PayPal uh, through yuanbookshow.com slash um, membership. Uh, thank you, uh, Johannes. Thank you, Enric. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you guys for, for the stickers. They're very much appreciated. Um, uh, thank you, Donna. I'm just going through the stickers. Thank you, Stephen, Mary Aline, Danny. Uh, so a lot of you have already given stickers. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, uh, Ben. Uh, thank you, Jonathan Honing. Uh, really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, thanks to all of you. Oh, and, and John, I think, did, did one even before this, the show started. So thank you, John. Um, let me, uh, let me, what did I want to say? Yeah, let me also note, since we have a lot of people on right now, this is your opportunity to vote about uh, the schedule, whether to keep the schedule as it is or to have the schedule go to every day from 2 to 4, uh, pretty much. Uh, that would be Tuesday through Friday with Monday uh, having a show at 2 p.m. and then uh, one show uh, in the evening for an interview. Uh, keeping the current, uh, you know, the 2 to 4 is really 2 to 5 uh, uh, because uh, the first hour would be a news roundup and then the second hour would be uh, some other topic and that could easily go an hour and a half, two hours. So all of these hour, all of these times in East Coast time, uh, as uh, all my hours typically are, so East Coast time, so please consider, uh, consider which one you would prefer, and please vote. Uh, since there are a lot of you here, it's an opportunity to have your voice heard. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Paula Zeus. Thank you, Rafael. I think they said that. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, John. Uh, really appreciate the support you guys are showing. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, keep it up. Um, let's see. Uh, Iraqi forces on high alert. Not sure what, what they have to worry about, although. Uh, Israeli planes will be flying over Iraq. I don't think Iraq has significant air defense uh, systems that Israel really has to worry about. Um, according to a U.S. official, between 50 to 75 one-way suicide drones have been launched by Iran against Israel. Again, I think this will only be one prong of whatever offensive they have. You'll probably see ballistic missiles and cruise missiles being launched in a few hours so that they reach their target at about the same time. Um, I, I, 50 to 75 one-way suicide drones does not strike me as that effective. What I expect Israel to do is to go deep into Jordanian territory, maybe even to Iraqi territory, and start knocking them down way before they reach Israel, way early so that they still have time to go after the cruise missiles when those show up. Israel can do that with both F-16s, uh, F-15s, uh, probably F-15s more likely than F-16s, and the F-35s uh, that they have uh, that have significant range uh, in order to uh, in order to reach. Um, uh, Q2 Santos says, 
and, and I answered this question a few minutes ago, so, but I'll try again. Morally speaking, was Israel justified to attack Iran's embassy in Syria? Was it in retaliation to their support of Hamas? Should Israel also attack other Arab countries that support Hamas? Uh, as I've said pretty much from the beginning of the show today, uh, this goes far beyond their support for Hamas. This is just, a, they're justified in attacking the embassy because the embassy was being used to plot attacks on Israel. The embassy was being used uh, uh, for military operations against Israel. Uh, Iran has been scheming and attacking Israel through proxies since, uh, since at least the rise of Khomeini, well, since, not at least, since the rise of Ayatollah Khomeini in 1979. That support has, in, has intensified during the 1980s with, with their support for Hezbollah and in the 2000s through their support of Hamas. Uh, Iran is Israel's enemy. Iran is in a state of war with Israel. Anything Israel chooses to do, anybody it chooses to bomb, any place it chooses to bomb that kills Iranians is 100% justified. I, I, Israel has been, bom has been killing Iranian scientists for years and years and years in an attempt to stall the Iranian nuclear program, and that has completely been justified by the fact that Iran has said that its nuclear program is meant to eradicate the state of Israel. Iran has threatened, which is a use of force, but is actually executed on the threat by funding, supporting, arming, and directly attacking Israel, Israel, uh, Israeli interests in Israel, in, in, you know, in, in uh, uh, in, uh, as I mentioned, in Argentina, uh, with the bombing of the Israeli embassy and the uh, Jewish community center, and numerous, dozens of other terrorist attacks in Israel and all over the world. Uh, the Iranians have been plotting against Israel, and the people in the embassy, in that building, the people who were meeting there and who died in this attack, were the plotters, were people plotting for these attacks. Therefore, they deserve to die. Uh, you know, again, it, 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 the sad thing about that attack is it's too little, and it should have been done earlier, and it should have been, should be done constantly. Every single leader within the Israeli, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, should know that his life is forfeit. Every single one of those leaders should know that they will die. Now, should Israel attack other Arab countries? Yes, if they support. Uh, the terrorists, if they support direct attacks on Israel, should, for example, every single one of the Hamas leaders who are now in Qatar be killed? Yes, they should all be killed, even if that means killing them in Qatar, even if that means taking down whatever building they live in in Qatar. The Qatari uh, regime is, again, a regime that is funded, supported uh, uh, attacks against Israel and therefore is illegitimate and Israel is morally justified in going after them. I don't think they will, and the Americans won't let them. Remember, America has its largest military base in the Middle East in Qatar. Uh, so I don't expect uh, that um, uh, Israel would ever attack Qatar directly because of the Americans. But morally, of course, they're legitimate. Uh, the enemy of my enemy is my enemy, particularly, uh, not sorry, the friend of my enemy, the supporter of my enemy, the funder of my enemy is my enemy. And of course you're legitimate in, uh, in attacking you, in, in, in defending yourself by attacking them. Thank you, Donna. Really appreciate the support. First super chat uh, at $50. Thank you, Donna. Means a lot. Really does. And let's see. Um, oh, there's already Brooke Derangement Syndrome detected in the chat. That's fun. Um, <laughs> All right, what else do we have here? Uh, I, I don't see the book derangement syndrome. Maybe I'm, I'm not scanning the chat closely enough. Um, all right, so there, now we have clear confirmation uh, across the board of one-way suicide drones heading over Iraq in the direction of Israel. So that is definitely happening, and the question is how many of them will actually reach? How, how uh, uh, proactive will Israel be in knocking them down, and will they knock them down? Um, uh, uh, over Jordanian and Iraqi territory await. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, y y Jonathan, I know you want to ask about China's economy. L let's wait with questions about China uh, for another show. There'll be plenty of opportunities to talk about the future of China's economy on a future show. Uh, again, Tom, thank you for the $100. Really, really appreciate it. Let's see, Glenn for $100 says, you on the analysis of this situation is fantastic. Your historical background over these past months 
has been enlightening to what this entire conflict is all about and why this is happening. Much appreciate your perspective. Uh, you know, let's, let's remember that the Islamists, the Islamists, the, what, what we called after 9-11 Islamic totalitarianism, that constitutes Iran. It constitutes Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, many of the uh, you know, uh, um, different groups of uh, Iranian-supported terrorists in the Middle East. It, it includes the Houthis. Uh, it includes uh, elements within the regime of Saudi Arabia, elements within the regime of Qatar, elements within the regimes of most uh, Arab countries. It includes the Muslim Brotherhood. All of these people, all of these groups, all of these regimes are dedicated to establishment. Their primary goal, their purpose, their long-term strategy is the creation of a Sharia state over the entire world. They are true globalists. They want one state, one state that is Islamic, one state in which the Islamic law, Sharia law rules, one state in which women wear hijabs, one state in which thieves get their hands chopped off, one state in which adultery is penalized by death by stoning. One state, uh, one defeatment says not a state, an empire. I, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but okay, an empire. They take global jihad seriously. They do not limit their attacks to Israel, although Israel is a primary target because they're Jews and because they're in the Middle East and because, most importantly, they are free. They hate liberty. They hate freedom. They hate individualism. They hate rights suspecting. They hate women's hair. They hate women who dare to show a piece of hair, never mind a shoulder or a knee. They hate sex. They hate the individual, and everything that, that, that is involved in that. Uh, it, it, this is a, a, an ideology that wants to take over the world. Uh, Saudi's not included. Elements within Saudi Arabia definitely included. Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia have not given up on this goal. Maybe right now they're all laying low because MBS doesn't like them. But elements in Saudi Arabia, significant elements, non-trivial elements within Saudi Arabia are completely supportive of this agenda. This is the agenda of Ogawan in Turkey, although he plays it moderate. This is the agenda of many Muslims around the world who accept this, often silently, but accept this as an agenda. This, by the way, is the agenda of all the people out there demonstrating in London and in uh, New York and in, on our university campuses. This is their agenda. River to the sea, you think it ends with Palestine. It does not. Their goal is ocean to ocean. They might be fools who don't know exactly what they're advocating for, but that is the intention. That is a leader's wish. Sharia law on the entire world. And yeah, you can still be a Christian under Sharia law, you can still be a Jew under Sharia law, pay a special tax. But, you know, how many, how many will survive that? How many people will actually survive that? Uh, that is their agenda. That's what they want. Now, they're weak. They won't get it. They can't achieve it. They can't be successful. But what really makes it possible for them to do anything is the West weakness, is the fact that they're allowed to continue the way they are. All right, spokesman for the Israeli Defense Forces has now confirmed that Iran has launched an attack against Israel, consisting so far of dozens of one-way suicide drones uh, currently passing through Iraq. He states that it will take hours for drones to reach Israel, and the GPS jamming and other measures from the United States, as well as other allied countries, are already in place to result in their interceptions. So this is why the GPS jamming was already in place uh, a while ago above Jordan. Uh, this is why your uh, mapping software, if you live in Israel right now, might not be working because uh, the GPS uh, jamming is probably affecting 
GPS reception uh, by uh, some Israelis. Uh, and uh, yeah, the war is on. The war between Israel and Iran is on officially. Uh, and uh, now the question is, how contained will it be? How, uh, how broad will it be? Uh, and what is going to be the damage? What is going to be the casualties? Uh, to what extent was Israel really ready for this? And to what extent will Israel be able to um, drop these, uh, you know, basically uh, cause uh, maximum damage to these drones before they ever reach Israel, uh, which is, I think, the goal of the jamming and the goal of uh, the Israeli Air Force at this point will be to drop these drones over the desert in, in, uh, in Jordan before they ever reach uh, Israeli uh, territory. I think Israel has the capabilities of doing that, but uh, the more stuff you throw at it, the more thinly stretched the Israeli Air Force will be, the more challenging uh, it will be uh, to actually have uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, effort. Um, according to another website here, um, it, it takes the drones nine hours to reach Israel, it takes cruise missiles two hours to reach missile, Israel, it takes ballistic missiles 12 minutes to reach Israel. So uh, again, we don't know the full scale of this attack and we won't know until we see whether the Iranians launch cruise missiles or ballistic missiles. I believe that that is one reason Israel will uh, try to get rid of the UAVs as quickly, as effectively as they can, so they can uh, focus their entire attention on ballistic and cruise missiles. Israel has very, very well-developed uh, missile defense systems that have never been tested, never thoroughly been tested. Uh, the, you know, the Iron Dome is primarily, um, primarily focused on short-range rockets and missiles. Um, Israel has uh, anti-ballistic and anti-cruise missiles defense systems, the Arrow and other. Uh, they sell them. They are known in the world as excellent, but they have never really been used, right? They've never really been used, so it'll be interesting. I, I also expect that the Iranian drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles are not very good, not very accurate, uh, and, and you know some of them will drop in the Mediterranean or in Jordan. Uh, but but we will see. Uh, uh, that's what happens when authoritarians build weapon systems. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's still you put an explosive on, you put an explosive on a on a rocket, uh, it will and can do damage. And uh, Israel's defense systems are going to be tested to the full if indeed Iran launches ballistic and cruise missiles, which, uh, as far as we know, it has not yet. Um, all right. As we said, Israel confirmed that the drones have launched. Um, yeah, it, it basically these are drones that can hover around a target, and then, and then, although after flying nine hours, I don't know how much fuel they have left. I don't know what the capacity of these drones are in terms of range, um, and uh, how, how many hours they can stay up in the air once uh, they are launched. I, I do not know. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do some of these super chats. I, I'm only going to do super chats related to this for now. Um, Michael says, you say there's no such thing as a war crime because war itself is a crime. But let's suppose an Israeli officer orders his soldiers to shoot a group of civilians he didn't need to kill. Um, should that officer be held accountable criminally? He should be held accountable criminally by the military authorities. He has uh, disobeyed orders. He has violated rules of engagement imposed on him by his own forces. And he should be condemned. It's not a war crime. It's a crime. It's a crime, and it's, it's a violation of his uh, responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis a military commander in, in a war. There's no separate thing as, as uh, an internationally recognized, an international law vis-a-vis -vis war crimes. Uh, the the, the uh, army in which he did this does not want to encourage this and they, therefore would penalize it themselves. It doesn't need some criminal court in some foreign country to declare it a war crime. There is, uh, I, I, the, the Hague has no authority. The Hague has no moral status. The Hague has no moral or, or legal standing. It is, uh, it is, a, it is an artificial creation um, that that stands for nothing, and uh, as Tom says on the chat, the Hague can pound sand 
and should. There's a reason why the United States has never signed the uh, International uh, Criminal Court um, uh, documents, never signed up for it. It's sad that Israel has, under international pressure, it did. It should have never done so. Again, The Hague has no legitimacy, uh, as, as no standing, uh, you know, and no authority over the individual rights of Israeli citizens, the individual rights of Israeli citizens, the responsibility of the Israeli government, not of some, and not, not of some group of so-called judges in, in The Hague who, who have supposedly some moral authority over what happens in a foreign country. Um, okay, more drones supposedly have come in uh, to the east of Baghdad, so that's further north. Originally, the sighting were to the south. Um, uh, the Israeli cabinet is already in session, in meetings, in a deep, deep bunker in uh, Tel Aviv. And uh, there is at least one Air Force KC-135R aerial refueling tanker currently airborne over western Iraq, likely providing support to U.S. and allied fighter aircraft that will attempt to intercept the Iranian one-way suicide drones. So it's, uh, don't know who is launching their Air Force to try to take out their drones. Uh, you would expect if the United States was involved that they would be launching out of Qatar. Qatar, the same Qatar, by the way, the same Qatar. They were launching out of Qatar um, uh, and um, uh, in an attempt uh, uh, to down uh, the drones. Uh, there's a refueling plane there which would allow F-35s or F-15s or F uh, whatever. F I don't think there are any F-22s, but maybe uh, in that region to, uh, to be able to refuel, go back, destroy drones, refuel, and stay up in the air for a very long time. Um, so, but the, the real question is, will the United States use its military assets in the region uh, for this, or will it just leave Israel to do it? It might be a combination. They might not use American fighters, but they might use the American refueling plane. And, and allow Israel to refuel, uh, use it for refueling, I don't know. It, it is gonna, certainly going to be interesting and have profound, I think, political and diplomatic um, effects whether uh, the United States is going to um, help Israel uh, you know, drop, these, um, uh, drop these various offensive um, uh, attack craft launched by uh, the Iranians. Um, Iraqi airspace has not been close to commercial flights. I would have expected that hours ago. Uh, President Biden is in the White House Situation Room with defense and military officials who are monitoring the Iranian attack against Israel, with President Biden having just spoken with uh, Netanyahu. So uh, everybody is, uh, is on high alert. All right, let's see. James, um, let's see. All right, I'm not going to do that. James, we'll talk about that later. We're just doing war right now. Okay, John says, Yuan, what would an Islamic utopia look like? If there was no one left to kill, would they just create more enemies or just torture women constantly? It sounds like hell on earth. Well, more enemies, of course. The Sunnis and Shiite hate each other. Um, there are, uh, there's no reason to believe that they will stop hating each other if uh, Islam wins. There's no reason to believe uh, that there won't be other sects created. Just think about ISIS and Al-Qaeda. ISIS and Al-Qaeda are both Sunni, and yet they both hate each other, and they were both killing each other. Um, uh, that is, again, one of the reasons why they cannot and will not win, because it, they hate each other's guts. They can't work together. They, they continuously uh, kill each other. I mean, Hamas, when the day of reckoning come, Hamas and and Iran are mortal enemies because one is Sunni and one is Shia. So there is no circumstances in which uh, really they can cooperate and get anything done. So look, I mean, this is good news for all of us, right? The reality is that, um, uh, that uh, Islam cannot win. It, it cannot muster the resources. It cannot uh, bond together in a way that can actually lead, uh, lead it to any kind of victory. The West is so much richer, so much more powerful. Again, the only, the only sense in which, um, uh, the the um, uh, the only sense in which uh, they are successful at all, at all, right now, even in, in launching these drones, is the West weakness. The West gives them the the space 
in order to uh, you know to continue uh, to continue doing this. So um, if the West ever got a tack together, maybe right now is the time. Who knows? Maybe not. If the West ever got a tack together, then um, this would be over very very quickly. The Muslim world wouldn't have a chance. Would not have a chance. But the West has not been able to get its act together. That is the reality. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, thank you. Got a lot of people watching, 245 people watching here on YouTube. I think there are 400 and something, uh, 459 people watching on Twitter. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoy this show, please feel free to use the, uh, use the uh, chat, super chat feature to support the show if you're on YouTube. If you're on uh, Twitter, either come to YouTube and support the show there, or you can uh, support the show by going to Patreon or by going to youronbookshow.com slash um, uh, membership and supporting via PayPal. Please consider support uh, the kind of programming uh, that I do here uh, and, uh, and, and have been doing uh, for, for, for many, many uh, years. Um, let's see. Let's go back. Thank you, John, for the $50 question. Um, yes. All right. Uh, all right. Private roads, Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Uh, Shazbot says, quote from Andor, a, a, a quote from Andor, good, a very good TV show that I really, really enjoyed watching uh, in the Star Wars uh, universe on Disney. Uh, quote, I would rather die trying to take them down than die giving them what they want. Yeah, if those are the two alternatives, in my view, no question. I always hope that I'd have the courage to, to do that, but uh, I'd rather die taking them out than taking them down than give them what they want. So um, you're dead either way. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm just looking for questions that relate to the topic that's going on right now. That's another off topic. Uh, off topic. All right, Michael says, are we seeing the beginning of the end of Iran and uh, the former Soviet Union? You mean Russia? But Putin and the Islamists of Iran may collapse from their overreaching mystical militarism. I mean, God. I really hope so. I can't tell you it's happening, but I really hope so. I mean, one of the one of the things that could happen, which I would hope would happen, which I would encourage to happen, is that part of the counterattack against Iran is focused on the regime, is focused on uh, the Ayatollah, is focused on the uh, the the uh, political leadership of Iran. Uh, you know, it'd be great to destroy it. And by doing so, uh, encourage Iranians to rise up and replace this regime. If, if the Israelis and or the Americans can take out the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, then that takes out the capacity of the Iranians to, to use uh, a military force to suppress their own population. It takes out their capabilities to suppress their own people. And uh, then one would hope it is an opportunity um, uh, you know, it, 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 it is a really opportunity to, uh, um, you know, to, to, to ultimately bring about regime change. This was what I think the whole world would benefit from. And the biggest beneficiary of regime change in Iran would be the Iranian people. As I said earlier today, they launched a huge clampdown against women not wearing their, you know, hijab. So uh, the, the, the launch about women against women showing a little bit of hair. So it would be a great opportunity, a great opportunity to take out this regime once and for all. Eli, you're asking a question in the chat. Please don't do that. If you want to ask a question, the Super Chat feature, you can ask it for $1. I'll answer it, but I cannot keep track of questions in the chat. It's, uh, it's too, there's too much overwhelming. Plus, people have actually put dollars behind the questions that they've asked, so they, they have to get priority over anything in the chat. Um, all right, let's just uh, refresh the screen and see if there's anything, any news happening. Um, all 
All right, Northern Iraq airport has been closed uh, again. So this is in the north. Maybe there are more drones being sent out from the north, which would which fly through Syria. Um, all right, Israeli sources to IDF. They estimate that Iran attack will also include cruise missiles and not just drones. We talked about that. Um, yeah, and then of course the real question is what does Hezbollah do? That is the that is a million dollar question. I think Israel can can easily handle uh, an attack from Iran uh, because of the distance, because of the slowness, and and because of the types of missiles. An attack from Hezbollah, which takes seconds, seconds, literally, is going to be much, much more difficult to handle. So whether Hezbollah enters this or not will be huge, and whether that leads to all-out war with Hezbollah, and what will the Lebanese army do in a circumstance like that? Will it attack Israel or will it attack Hezbollah? Is up in the air, so there's a lot, a lot going on. All right. Um, Regime changes our business when the regime is a regime that's attacking you. When the regime is a regime that wants to kill Americans, then it's the responsibility of the American government to change the regime of countries which are enemies of the United States, clearly trying to kill Americans, which the Iranian regime is actually uh, doing. Um, Prime Minister of Israel just tweeted we have determined a clear principle. Whoever harms us, we will harm them. We will defend ourselves against any threat and will do so level-headedly and with determination. Uh, Iranian telegrams are claiming that land attack cruise missiles and one-way suicide drones have also been launched by the Houthi terrorist group in Yemen at Israel. Uh, you'd expect the United States to be able to take out those with its uh, ships in the, uh, in the Red Sea. Um, so also attacks from the south, uh, probably uh, focused on the southern tip of Israel in Elat, which is a city in the southern tip closest to Yemen, closest uh, to the Houthis. Um, yeah, all right. Um, all right. Let us, uh, let's go back to the super chat. Uh, so, yeah, let's hope that it's the end. Uh, Andrew says, how does the proportionality of punishment on the principle of justice differ if, uh, if at all in war as against regular crime? Well, I mean, the, the proportionality in, 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 uh, in war needs to be that proportion which leads to victory. That is, the War is not about justice. War is about victory. War is about ending the threat. And therefore, the proportion, the proportionality of your response has to be that which is necessary to end the threat, to eviscerate the enemy, to stop them from attacking you. And uh, that could be a small proportional, could be very large proportional, could be uh, it could be a nuke like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It, it is whatever is necessary to end a threat as quickly, as effectively, and with, uh, as possible with the, least, with the least casualties on your side. That's the only proportionality consideration. Victory. Victory at the, at the smallest cost in lives to yourself. And that's different than a criminal which has... The whole criminal system is, is, is targeted at something very different than the military. It's not about defeating some enemy. It's about, uh, you know, bringing about justice. Um, all right. Michael says, I've never heard the word genocide used falsely so many times in my life. The left is blatantly Orwellian. Yes, they are. And, and it truly is uh, unbelievable. All right. Just a reminder, the show which might go on for quite a while, although I might take a, a quick break in a minute, um, because I, I, I think we'll just keep going to see what the consequences are going to be, um, and, and I'll keep reporting on them. Uh, the show is funded from support from you guys. Uh, again, we've got 250 people watching live on YouTube right now. You can support the show right now by asking a question on a Super Chat or doing a just a... a um, 
It's just a contribution. You don't have to ask a question. You can just use a sticker to make a contribution to the Iran Book Show and fund uh, shows like this that in real time are giving you news, covering a show, giving history and everything else. Also, please consider liking the show. Just click the like button. Uh, it helps a lot with the algorithm. It, uh, it, it, it helps other people find the show. It helps expand. It doesn't cost you a thing other than a little click of the mouse. Uh, and, and it helps the Iran Book Show a tremendous amount. Uh, the, you know, we should have way over 200, uh, 200 uh, likes by now. Um, so double what we have right now. So please consider before you leave, if you leave, when you leave, please click that, um, that like button, uh, that thumbs up button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can do that on your mobile app or on your, and those of you who are not live, those of you on Twitter, I know that at some point there were way over 400 people watching this on Twitter. I don't know if that's cumulative or at any given point in time. I don't know how Twitter produces these stats. Uh, but if you are listening right now live, then uh, 496 people. If you'd like to support what I do, if you'd like to support this approach to American foreign policy, to Israeli foreign policy and, and, and self-defense, uh, a particular uh, you know, approach to war and victory, then please consider supporting the Iran Book Show on Patreon or on uh, iranbookshow.com slash membership and on my website, that's through PayPal. Um, uh, again, more images, uh, more images uh, coming out of Iraq, uh, of drones, but there are reports now, um, yeah, of several of them at, uh, crashing in Iraq, Syria, and Jordan, bef uh, so before they even reach uh, Israel. So that'll, that'll be interesting to monitor and see how many of them, if, uh, how many of them actually reach. All right, uh, let me look. Um, uh, James Taylor says, if Israel bombs Iran, will Iran just take it? I, I don't know. It depends how uh, big of a capability Iran has, um, whether uh, the United States participates in knocking down uh, their, uh, their weapons. Um, in other words, uh, because then, uh, you know, they can launch all they want and, and they'll, be, they'll be all knocked out of the sky. Um, I think Iran will retaliate. It's going to be, but it's going to be interesting how this ends because, um, who tires out first, in a sense, the Iranians or the, or the Israelis, and what kind of targets are targeted uh, during this back and forth. So uh, very, very hard to tell exactly how this evolves, uh, how this develops. I, I said a few days ago, the Iranians are crazy to attack from Iranian soil because they've now opened it up for, uh, for the Israelis. Now, here is, here is the real danger. Here is the, the bad news, right? The bad news could very well be that the United States has cut a deal with Israel. And that deal is that the United States will help Israel shoot down all these drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles. And in exchange, Israel will not attack Iran without American permission. Now, that would be a horrible deal for the Israel to take. I hope they have not agreed to that. Let me give you an example where that deal was actually made. Israel did it and suffered massive, massively for it. In 1991, during the first Gulf War, uh, Israel was directly attacked by the Iraqis. They launched missiles after missile after missile. This is before Israel had a fully functioning missile defense system. Um, Israelis spent days in air raid shelters. There were massive uh, missile attacks. The Americans prohibited Israel from attacking Iraq. That was America's job. America did a very lousy job at it because they never took out the missile launches. But Israel was prohibited from actually doing it. Israel could have stopped the missile attacks on its soil. It had the capabilities. I know it had the capabilities to take out those missile launches. It did not because the Americans told them not to. Imagine if the Biden administration has basically told the uh, Israelis, you cannot retaliate. We will help you, but you cannot retaliate. Now, that would be, that would be a, a massive disaster. This has to be something that Israel retaliates over and uses as a reason, as an excuse, if you will, to eviscerate uh, the, uh, the Iranian nuclear program, the Iranian drone building program, and much of Iran Iran's military capabilities. 
All right, Iranian state media now is reporting, this is the state media of Iran, that Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps have launched an extensive drone attack against Israel. So, so far, they've only admitted to drones. If it's just drones, I think it'll be minimal damage. We will see if they also launch uh, cruise missiles or um, uh, worse, ballistic missiles. So or whether they, they don't want to escalate it, uh, this could be a, a small attack with just drones without crews and, uh, without crews and ballistic missiles um, and, and in order to uh, keep this uh, uh, from escalating and save the crews and ballistic missiles for retaliation once Israel strikes, uh, strikes them. Um, Israel has never bombed properly the Iranian nuclear facilities. They have uh, they've hacked into their computers and caused their centrifuges to be broken. They have killed scientists. They have blown up certain facilities from the ground. They have never never launched an all-out attack uh, on um, on um, uh, the Iranian nuclear facilities. If they had, those facilities wouldn't exist anymore. Uh, but they have not, and uh, I've been urging them to do so for 20 years. And like everybody else in the world, they've been ignoring me. All right, Islam Ali writes, uh, Iran, amongst others in the region, is a culture whose values, values martyrdom. Uh, is complete annihilation the only way to subdue this religious suicidal ideology? I don't think so, because while certain people in Iran might value martyrdom, I mean, the bottom line is I don't think the leaders do, and I don't, certainly don't think the people do. Uh, that is, the best hope for Iran is that Israel or the United States or both annihilate much of Iranians' military capabilities and the people rise up and replace the nihilistic, suicidal, martyrdom culture that exists among certain parts of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. But I don't see Khamenei or, or, or you know, the, the, the various politicians in Iran wanting to die. They talk the talk. They'll send children to die for them. They'll fund suicide bombers all around the world, but not a single one of them is strapping on a suicide vest and blowing themselves up for the cause. They, they don't believe in the virgins that consistently. So I just don't think, I, yeah, I, I think victory doesn't mean annihilation. Um, yeah, this is just foreign policy related. Ben Shapiro praises Trump's foreign policy because he was surrounded by competent people, but fails to mention the same people called Trump incompetent. I mean, that's a little mild. They called him much worse than incompetent. And the reality is that there's no reason to believe that Trump will surround himself with competent people next time around. No reason to believe that. Because all the competent people who he surrounded with the first time turned against him. And uh, he's learned his lesson. This time, he will not hire competent people. He'll hire people who are loyal. Loyalty is the number one value uh, for Trump, just as an aside. That should turn a bunch of people off. All right. Um, Hopper Campbell, if the Iranian regime feels like it's going to collapse, will it uh, fear military engagement with Israel or go full nihilism and launch everything they have? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it means for them to think they are going to collapse. Who are the people uh, in charge of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the same people making the political decisions? I, I don't know. I don't think it's that simple, and I don't think it's that possible. The very fact that they were willing to launch from Iran suggests to me that they're either not afraid because they think that the Israelis will not respond, they think that the Americans won't let them respond, or that they are desperate and they have to take a stand and they they are hoping that what this will actually do is rev up um, Iranian nationalism and distract the Iranians from how bad the economy is and how offensive the morality police are and all of that stuff so let, let's see uh, let's see what happens um, let's see what happens uh, in the next few hours and let's see how uh, but I, I don't know um, all right Okay, so a lot of airplanes are flying back to flying to Turkey instead of to Iraq because Iraq is closed off. Uh, seen um, uh, Israeli defense forces have evacuated several bases. 
launched eight craft and placed eight defense systems on high alert to intercept what is believed to be a one-way suicide drone launched from Western Iran and Iraq. Uh, uh, U.S. officials have also stated they believe the drones reaching Israel will be synchronized with launch of cruise and ballistic missiles from Iran. We'll see. That would mean significant escalation. So we'll see if they also... Uh, also, I, I see a number of people uh, posting uh, Palestine will be free soon. Um, no, don't, don't, you know, Israel's going to win this. There's no doubt about that. It's more a question of uh, the extent of uh, casualties and uh, on both sides and uh, the extent of the Israeli response and potentially an, an Israeli response. Um, okay. Uh, okay, it looks like the drones are now approaching Jordanian and Syrian airspace. So, uh, uh, so it's going to be interesting. I mean, this is where I think they will start, uh, Israeli airplane will start intercepting them is once they cross into uh, Jordan and into, um, uh, into Syria. I don't know who's going to be reporting on that because I don't know who will observe that and actually, and actually see that. Um, um, Ali says, Iran government are worst actors in the area thanks to U.S. war in Iraq. N not true, Ali. They are the worst actors in the area, but they were the worst actors in the area starting in 1979. Uh, they, they destroyed uh, Lebanon. Uh, they, they, uh, it had nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, with the, um, with, uh, uh, the U.S. invasion of Iran. The, 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 of Iraq, the, the thing that it did do is U.S. weak, pathetic invasion of Iraq, and Iraq should have never been a target. There was, America had no business in Iraq. But that invasion gave Iraq, Iran a lot more power. So it wasn't that their intentions were any different. It was that now it gave them the opportunity to actually have real uh, political influence in Iraq itself. Then the Syrian civil war played right into Iranian hands. The uh, the uh, it, because uh, they supported uh, the president uh, uh, and uh, in the civil war they, they supported the oppressive regime of Assad um, and uh, uh, Bashir al Assad and uh, and uh, so Iran has always been the horrible regime but what the Iraq War has opened up the entire of Iraq for its influence thus allowing them basically to have a huge influence. Uh, on Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, and to have land connection from Iran all the way to Lebanon. So uh, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Uh, of course, Lebanon, they've had influence there since the 1980s, since the creation of Hezbollah. Um, and of course, uh, it's not the war in Iraq that created the connection between Iran and, um, uh, and uh, Hamas. All right. Um, Let's see, I'll just refresh the page. In the meantime, uh, do Hamas fighters ever run away or do they fight to the last man like Japanese in World War II? I think some run away. We've seen a lot of Hamas fighters surrender uh, to Israeli forces. Uh, many of them fight to the last, many of them fight to the death because they believe that they'll go to heaven if they do. But many of them surrender. Most people don't want to commit suicide. Most people don't fight to the very end. Uh, most people do not believe in their cause that much. All right, initial reports regarding the launch of land attack cruise missiles and possible ballistic missiles from the Islamic Revolutionary Guards in Iran towards Israel. If they've indeed uh, launched ballistic missiles, those ballistic missiles will reach Israel within minutes, right? So w within the next 20 minutes, they would reach Israel. So we will know about that very, very quickly. Um, uh, cruise missiles probably take a couple of hours. Um, and they would probably reach Israel just a little ahead of the um, of the drones. So um, we will see. We will see um, if 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 this report is right about uh, about launch of uh, crews and uh, and ballistic missiles. Um, Kirk says, but 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 what about CIA overthrew Mus? Mus uh, this is the Prime Minister of Iran in 1956, if I remember right, 
uh, installed the Shah and helped install the Shah in place because uh, the Prime Minister of Iran was moving Iran towards the Soviet Union and being part of the Soviet bloc. Uh, and the British and Americans and some Iranian forces overthrew him. And uh, that was a long time ago. And uh, that is not the cause of the problems we face today. The cause of the problems we face today is the Islamic Republic of Iraq, Iran. It is Ayatollah Khomeini, Khamenei, and, and the Islamists, the Islamist ideologues in Iran. They are the cause, they are the reason for what we are experiencing today and how Iran has become. Uh, Gail says, be uh, safe and courageous Iranian women. Absolutely. Um, uh, Frank says, can Iran invade a lot by going up the Red Sea? No, I mean, it's far for them. Uh, very unlikely. Um, Israel has a, has a navy in the Red Sea. Uh, I'm not sure the Saudis would, would be supportive of that. I'm not sure the Egyptians would allow that to happen. Uh, the Iranians coming up the Red Sea, the Saudis are not exactly Iran's friend, and neither really, at the end of the day, are the Egyptians. Uh, Matt, Iran shouldn't be capable of doing this attack. They shouldn't be, uh, but they are. They are because, uh, because uh, they have, uh, have ad had advisors from Russia. They've stolen Western technology, and the West has sat back and allowed Iran to build up these kind of capabilities. And if we'd waited a few years, uh, these uh, cruise missiles and uh, ballistic missiles could have nuclear warheads on them. Luckily, uh, these don't, but they could have in a few years. Um, Ed says, if Israel does what you say, bombing the nuke sites, etc., what do you think the reaction will be the power players, United States, Soviets, China? Well, I mean, the United States, I, I think everybody are going to be, uh, everybody will, uh, the United States would say the Iranians deserved it. I think the, the United States will stand by Israel. Everybody else will condemn it. The, the UN will condemn it. Everybody will condemn it. But I think at the end of the day, does, uh, does the Soviet Union and China want Iran to have nukes? I think the answer is no. I don't think uh, Russia wants, I don't know why you call it the Soviet Union, but Russia does not want Iran to have nukes. Russia has its own problems with Muslims, as you saw with the attack of ISIS on them. Um, and uh, they have a number of, uh, of regions in Russia which are dominantly Muslim. So the Russians do not want, uh, the Russians do not want uh, Iran to, to, to have nukes. Um, uh, neither does China. China has big problems with Muslims in, in its West, right? The Uyghurs are Muslims. That's why they have these camps for the Uyghurs. That's to try to control their Muslim problems. They don't want China to have, they don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. So while they will condemn it, uh, they're not going to defend Iran. China, uh, Russia, China do not want to get in uh, and, 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 and don't want to get into a war over this. This is not their issue. All right, um, let's see. Andrew says, I like the current schedule. One, friendly to schedules of workers. Two, division between current events and deeper subjects. Three, positive show Saturday. My support for the show continue, continues regardless. I mean, there will still be a positive show. So like today, Saturday, and it's not a positive. So it still would be a positive show. Uh, it'll just be on a different day. I'll, I'll have to figure out exactly when. Uh, you guys can vote on uh, the new schedule. So far, keeping the current schedule has a majority. Uh, that'll definitely be something I consider, but, uh, but uh, please continue voting. We have a lot of people watching, over 250 uh, live, so please continue voting. Um, Jordan has declared a state of emergency due to the ongoing Iranian attack against Israel. Uh, and again, in terms of flights, uh, Iranian airspace closed, uh, Jordan airspace closed, Israel airspace closed. Um, and uh, let's see, um, air defense systems in Jordan are high alert and prepared to intercept any hostile target which enters the Jordanian airspace. So Jordanians might be knocking down these drones even before they reach Israel. I, you know, and, and Jordan has some capabilities, particularly I think American capabilities uh, right there. Again, the U.S. Uh, aerial refueling tanker over Iraq is... Um, uh, Maybe has been maybe has been attacked, so um, supposedly it's squawking a uh, some kind of emergency. So hard to tell what's going on. Everything is fluid, fog of war. Hard to tell if any of this is true. 
I mean, we know that a, an attack has been launched. Everybody's acknowledged that. But whether something like this, the, the fueler has been attacked by something or somebody, hard to tell. But if that is true, if it has been attacked, that is an attack on an American asset that could be an excuse for America to, uh, to enter into what, uh, whatever is going on here. Um, uh, it could be, quite, uh, could be quite substantial. Reminded everybody that um, I am encouraging supporting the show. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to continue doing this until, I don't know, who knows until when, but I will continue to be here telling you, giving you uh, commentary on what is happening and, uh, and how it is going uh, through the rest of uh, this afternoon, this evening. Uh, so uh, uh, feel free to keep supporting the show and to, uh, and to make, it, uh, make it make sense. All right, I'm going to take a two-minute break. I'm not going to cut the video stream. It's going to be right here, a two-minute break. You can use stickers. You can use the Super Chat. You can use any means to support the show. Two-minute break, and I will be back with you. All right, I am back. We are um, updating you live on everything going on with the uh, launch of an attack on Israel by the Iranian regime. So far, we know that there are dozens of um, uh, drones heading towards Israel, uh, probably, as we speak, crossing into Jordanian and uh, Syrian territory. Uh, by my estimate, if they're, uh, if they're uh, crossing into Jordanian territory, uh, U.S. assets in Jordan as well as Jordanian assets are probably trying to knock them down as we speak. I would also uh, not be surprised at all if Israeli Air Force is operating in Syria right now and in Jordan right now in order to take down drones. Uh, there's also reports um, uh, There's also reports that uh, Iran has also already launched both crews and ballistic missiles from Iran towards Israel. We will know whether ballistic missiles were launched very, very quickly here because ballistic missiles, they, of course, go out into their, uh, uh, you know, they go, they go up and down. Uh, they, do, they are very fast. Uh, they will reach Israel within minutes. Um, given when the announcement was made, I would expect them to reach Israel within the next 10 minutes, and we will know that very quickly. Uh, if you like what I do, if you... Uh, if you want to support the kind of commentary that you receive on this show, then please consider uh, providing financial support. I'm going to keep this going until we have clarity in terms of what is going um, in what is going on here and uh, the extent of this attack, the, uh, the amount of damage uh, that it inflicts, uh, and uh, whether, of course, it, it is a wider. You know, and I will be back, of course, if, if Israel retaliates, uh, we'll be back later with that, whether that is tomorrow or later today. Um, let's see, Jordan has declared a state of emergency uh, due to the Iranian attack on Israel. Um, again, Jordan, no friend of Israel, but Jordan is also no friend of the Iranians. Uh, so uh, uh, divided alliances are for sure here. Um, as, as I told you a second ago, <laughs> now we're getting reports of Israeli aircraft are reported to be intercepting one-way suicide drones over Syrian airspace. Um, uh, and, uh, okay, more pictures uh, being posted online of the Iranian drones over Iraqi airspace, but Israel is shooting down drones over uh, Syrian airspace. Syrian airspace, as we know, Israel has operated pretty freely. By the way, if Russia wants to get involved, just so we understand, if Russia wants to get involved, Russia has assets in Syria. Russia has its most uh, advanced uh, air defense system in Syria. Russia could launch missiles against Israeli airplanes, um, ground-to-air missiles 
from Syria, uh, you know, I, I don't know how they would do against an F-35. I think the reason they've never launched against Israel is they don't want the world to see how incompetent they are. But if Russia wanted to enter this war, if Russia wanted to side with Iran, they could do so from Syria. Russia has significant, again, significant military assets. It has ships uh, in the Mediterranean off the coast of Syria. It has aircraft in Syrian air force bases. And it has significant ground forces on the ground in uh, Syria, including, as I said, batteries, air defense batteries, um, uh, air defense batteries. I do not think that the Russians could take down an F-35, uh, an Israeli F-35. I don't think they could even take down an, an Israeli F-15. It is why they have never launched against Israel, because they do not want to show the world that their missile, that their missile defense systems are actually pretty... Uh, uh, futile and impotent versus America and Israel's most advanced weapons. Just to give you a sense, the uh, F-35, which is a, which is the, the probably the best aircraft in the world today, uh, together with the F-22. Israel has F-35s, and but it takes the American F-35s and improves it. So Israel uses its own technology in order to upgrade uh, the American F-35, um, and and in particular in terms of uh, air defenses, defending against. Uh, ground-to-air missiles, um, and other capabilities. Uh, Israel is a very technologically advanced uh, country, uh, as I think many of you know. Uh, much of that technology is used uh, for uh, defense purposes, and, um, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it is using that in those F-35s. Israel probably has the world's most advanced F-35s, probably more advanced or at least as advanced as the top-of-the-line U.S. versions. Um, all right, let me see if I can find any other breaking news. Um, all right, well, refresh that. All right, let's see. Um, all right, all right. Rafael says, "Why Iran is launching drones?" If they know they will never reach Israel's territory, what am I missing? Well, they, they don't know that. Look, uh, a lot of what uh, Iran is doing is, a, uh, is part of domestic policy. They need to show that uh, they're not going to stay quiet as Israel uh, attacks uh, their own people. Uh, you know, the, the embassy bombing in, uh, in Damascus. Uh, they have to show the domestic uh, population that they are tough, that they are strong that they, they can stand up to Israel. Uh, even if the drones don't land, they, they can claim all kinds of things. They control the media in Iran. They can invent anything. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the supreme leader of Iran, Ali Khamenei, has just posted in English on Twitter, the malicious Zionist regime will be punished. All right? So they believe the drones will reach Israel. Right? right? I mean, this is all an issue of... of of strategy and tactics. And, you know, again, we don't know if they've launched ballistic and cruise missiles. Uh, that could create real havoc for Israel to both be shooting down drones and have to deal with ballistic and cruise missiles. And we don't know what Hezbollah is going to do. We won't know for several hours what Hezbollah is going to do. But that is the key. Hezbollah can do a lot more damage to Israel, a lot more damage on a completely different scale than anything that Iran can launch against Israel. Israel can handle, I believe, what the Iranians are launching right now. They can handle that. Hezbollah, a whole different story. Also, Iranians are probably targeting um, military targets. Hezbollah will target everything. So we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, Hezbollah does not have airplanes. Uh, public, uh, public bomb shelters have begun to open in northwest Israeli city of Haifa. <laughs> Haifa is my city. It's where my parents live, where my brother lives and his, uh, and his kids. Um, uh, my parents would be going, uh, they, they, they live in a high rise, so they would be going to secure room within their apartment. So they have one room in their apartment, a small room, um, which is, um, you know, concrete on all sides. It doesn't have a window. It's got a, a steel plated window, um, but it is on the sixth floor of a multi-rise uh, building. 
Uh, my father is 89 years old. My mother is uh, 80. He just turned 89. My mother's 83. She just turned 83. They both had birthdays in the last week. Uh, and they would be going to the air raid shelter soon. I don't know if air raid sirens have gone off yet, uh, but clearly public air raid shelters have opened. My brother, I think, has a, uh, a defensive, uh, he, he lives in a house. I think he has a defensive a, a room like that uh, in the house. Um, my sister lives in the Galilee, so she would be closer, even closer to the Lebanese border. Um, and I, I'm not sure what they have. They probably have a communal, uh, communal public uh, shelter uh, over there. Um, the Syrian army has placed air defense around the capital of Damascus and military bases across the country on high alert. They're always on high alert. That's, that means zero zilch. Israel operates pretty freely in Syria in spite of uh, their air defense systems. Um, all right, so, uh, but it does sound like northern Israel is the target. Um, that means that the drones probably come off of, or some of the drones at least, probably come off of uh, Syria, uh, not off of, uh, you know, off of Syria, or, or the other reason they could be opening up bomb shelters in Haifa is that they anticipate Hezbollah entering into this. And if that's the case, then um, Haifa is the target. There's no question. Haifa is the imminent, immediate uh, city right in front of where Hezbollah is. You can, you can, you know, on a clear day, you can basically see Lebanon from Haifa uh, without, with a, with a naked eye. So it's not far away at all. Um, uh, again, source. Who knows if it's right or not? Of course, so far, the source have been pretty good, right? We, we called the drone attack well before any official source said it. So here's another source. So far, the Israeli military has identified more than 100 drones launched from Iran. The Israeli Air Force is tracking the drones and is preparing for additional waves of attack, which may also include missiles. So, uh, so far, no confirmation the missiles are being launched towards Israel. Let's hope that stays the case. I really hope they don't launch missiles. Um, because I think those, that's where it really, really, really can get um, uh, damaging. Um, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Trying to just check in the news feeds. Remember the, 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 the Biden administration unfose significant money for the for the Iranians. The Biden administration has been negotiating in the background with the Iranians. They uh, they reduced the sanctions on the Iranians. The Biden administration is go should share significant responsibility in what is going on here. Uh, again, at, at the same time, it's not like Trump did much in terms of Iran. Um, All right, I see that stream is mostly just. All right, let's see, what else do we have? Um, all right, uh, the, uh, the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard, the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard has named the operation against Israel True Promise. Um, supposedly a third wave of Iranian one-way suicide drones has entered Iraqi airspace. Well over 100, 150 drones have now been launched by Iran at Israel. So three waves of drones so far, no real verifiable evidence that um, cruise missiles or ballistic missiles have been launched by uh, the Iranians uh, towards, uh, towards Israel. All right, let's see. Um, let's keep on going with the questions. By the way, again, a lot of people watching. Uh, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, to subscribe to the channel. Um, th these are the kind of shows, uh, you know, we covered uh, really October 7th, almost as it was happening, as the news was filtering in on the same day. We covered it the next day. We've covered the Middle East extensively over the last uh, nine years that this show in one format or another has been going on. We cover almost everything else um, uh, that is important in the world particularly the United States, but in the world more broadly. Uh, so feel free to subscribe to the channel. Please do so. If, you've, uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. 
Also, please like the show. Just click that like button before you leave. Very, very much appreciate it. And if you like what you hear or you'd like to support the show, you'd like to uh, help the show keep going, then uh, please consider uh, a contribution. You can ask a, through a question asked or through a super chat. Um, that, would be, uh, that would be really, uh, really terrific. Um, you know, we are... Uh, we're here to answer your questions. Uh, feel free to ask any questions about anything. Uh, Zach, uh, Zach T. asks, did Hamas make a huge strategic mistake um, to not wait until now to carry out a multi-front attack? Um, well, uh, you know, uh, sure, there's no question that if they could have arranged it and launched the October 7th attack at the same time as Iran, at the same time as Hezbollah, a lot more damage would have been inflicted on Israel and it would have been a lot worse. But, but this is the issue. The issue is that bad guys, evil powers, are uh, evil powers in and of itself, right, uh, are incompetent. And, and coordination and figuring all this out and coordinating it all and working to coordinate it all uh, is, is, is requires effort and strategy and thinking and, and, and stuff that generally evil in the world does not have the capability of and, and, and does not know how to do. Uh, should Hitler open a second front against uh, the Soviets when he did before beating, uh, before uh, taking uh, the United Kingdom? Obviously not from a strategic perspective of what would be required for, for Germany to win. But he's Hitler, so of course he did the irrational. So um, uh, you, you can't expect these people to be, uh, to be strategic and to be, uh, to be strategic in the way they do this stuff. Should Iran right now be launching 150 drones? What about ballistic missiles? What about cruise missiles? The drones have given Israel hours of prep time uh, to defend itself. A uh, ballistic missile would have given them 12 minutes. So, you know, <laughs> why start with drones? Why give Israel all this prep time? I mean, Jordan is now reporting that it will shoot down any drone that enters its airspace, right? Most drones heading towards Israel are going to go through, probably going to go through Jordan, or at least parts of Jordan, although I think they're, they're going to try to target them primarily through Syria, where they will be allowed to fly. Uh, but, uh, you know, yes, Iran has sent between 100 and 150 drones towards Israel, uh, suicide drones, one-way drones. So. Uh, Jordan is now saying that it will shoot down, and that's why Haifa's on alert, because if you're coming in from Syria, the north of Israel is the most likely to be hit, most likely to be hit, right? So bad guys almost never execute their evil plan effectively. All, all that nonsense about evil geniuses, on uh, superhero movies or movies generally, James Bond movies and so on, just not true. Uh, evil people tend to be pretty stupid. Um, all right. Uh, what is going on? It's not what I want. This is what I want. Okay, more questions. Um, I see Saracen. Should we just let Israel and Iran dick it out and leave the U.S. out of it? I mean, I think that's fine if that happens, but the reality is that, is that the United States has clear, unequivocal interest here. The United States uh, has been at war with Iran uh, since 1979. It just the U.S. administration, after administration, has refused to admit it. The United States should take part in this. It should have never left it to Israel. This is primarily an American war. And the United States should have taken them out. I have no problem uh, in keeping the U.S. out of it, if that'll make you guys feel better, but it's wrong. Uh, the reality is, the reality is that uh, it is America that should be taking out the Iranians uh, and, and should be decimated the Iranian nuclear program. It is the Americans, uh, through appeasement, uh, that have made possible this attack. So... I, I, America and Israel's interests right now are the same. The, the end of the Iranian regime. 
And if America can help end that regime, then it should help end that regime. You know, it's kind of sad. It's pathetic, really, not just sad. It's pathetic that... Um, it's pathetic that... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the United States hasn't done this alone, that it requires uh, the United States uh, to do it. All right, uh, there's pictures coming out of the um, meeting of the Israeli war cabinet where people are pretty pissed off and angry. Um, Israel, Israeli aircraft are now reported to be in Jordan airspace, conducting more interception of Iranian one-way suicide drones, so that's happening. Um, Israel is preparing for several days of fighting against Iran with an Israeli response expected soon. Uh, let's see. Yes, it's 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 a it's a few days they expect of uh, ongoing defensive operations to be followed by offensive operations. So we'll see uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, thank you, I see Sarasan. So this is a this is an American war, even though America won't admit it, and that is just a sign of America's cowardice uh, and America's public's uh, uh, inability anymore to think strategically and long term, and to a large extent because of the betrayal that the American public has been betrayed by its politicians and by its intellectuals who never explained, who never explained, um, uh, you know, why go to Afghanistan, why go to Iraq, why stay in Afghanistan, why stay in Iraq, why, why these wars were necessary, why they were uh, valuable, and, they, and some of them weren't. So um, uh, it is the failure of America to actually go out there and defend itself, crush its enemies, and come home that has created all this angst in the Middle East. America could have ended this a long time ago, and it's chosen not to. Um, all right, uh, Andrew says, do you think people are misapplying the value of human life and establishment, uh, life established during the Enlightenment uh, to the issue of protecting innocent lives in Gaza, or are there more nefarious ideas at work? Um, no, I mean, I think that they are misapplying the value of human life, certainly. That's part of it. But it is, uh, it is uh, more nefarious. Certainly, some people hate Israel. Uh, they hate the Jews. They hate self-defense. Uh, uh, certainly, Christianity uh, has uh, this idea of uh, turn the other cheek and anti-self-defense. So there are lots of different ways in which, there are lots of different ways in which uh, the ideas that the left has, the ideas that the right have, are anti-self-defense and prevent uh, and prevent making the difference, making the differentiation. Also, we live in a culture that's anti-moral judgment. So who are you to say one party's evil and one party's good? Who are you to make that kind of judgment and to, and to uh, talk about evil and good and evil? Uh, and as a consequence, uh, there is... Um, yeah, as a consequence, uh, you know, the whole idea of innocent lives, uh, how, how do you define innocent? And uh, who is innocent and who is good? And who is, you're not allowed to have an opinion about that. So that's definitely misapplying, but it's more than that. It is, it is the lack of moral judgment, the lack of morality. By what standard? What standard of morality do you use in order to describe some people as good and some people as evil? Um, all right, interesting. Egypt has closed its airspace to commercial flights, and that, I assume, means that the Houthis have launched something against Israel. The Houthis, in order to get to Israel, would come close to Egypt. Uh, any one of their drones or any one of their other uh, type of weapon systems could easily cross into Egyptian airspace. I don't see any reason why Egypt will close their airspace if not for the Houthis launching something against Israel, whether it's drones or whether it's uh, some kind of cruise missile. Um, um, Iran is reportedly threatened to attack any country in the Middle East that opens its airspace to an Israeli attack against Iran. That means Jordan, Syria, and Iraq, which is a way Israel would fly. I don't think anybody's really threatened by that on the part of uh, the Iranians. Uh, U.S. President Biden is expected to address the nation from the Oval Office later today. That, I think, for sure means that uh, the Americans are participating in whatever self-defense actions are, um, uh, are involved. So to the extent 
that, uh, you know, drones are being knocked down. I wouldn't be surprised if American assets are involved. Otherwise, I don't see why Biden would be addressing. He is addressing this in the context of supporting Israel. Um, uh, one, one more source. In the coming hours, the U.S. expects missile launches from Iran and southern Lebanon. That's Hezbollah. That's really bad. And maybe even the Houthis. I think the Houthis have already launched. The Iranians are trying to overwhelm the Israeli air defense pro-Israeli official. I think that's right. Uh, that makes the most sense for the Iranians to do is to launch from all fronts and try to completely overwhelm Israel's uh, self-defense uh, capabilities. Um, that is, uh, that is definitely, a, uh, definitely what's going on. Senior U.S. official has told ABC News that they expect Iran to launch between 400 to 500 one-way suicide drones and missiles against Israel in an attempt to overwhelm their air defense systems. So again, this is probably a, uh, this is just numbers. You just, uh, uh, how long can the pilots stay up there? How many anti-drone missiles do they have? These, uh, the thing about these drones is they're pretty cheap. Um, you know, it is questionable whether Israel should be deploying all its air defense systems to go after drones or whether it should be keep them in reserve to go after ballistic and cruise missiles. I don't know, not an expert here. I don't know what Israel's, uh, uh, you know, uh, what its total capabilities of, are and, and where, how long it can sustain a defensive effort uh, in this regard. It really is hard to tell. All right, we've got 250 people watching, 170 likes. My guess is about 1,000 people have watched this show and gone in and out. Uh, 170 likes. I mean, if you if you have any appreciation for what I'm doing, even a little bit, please just like the show. Just press that. It costs you nothing, zero zilch. I will be going on probably for the next couple of hours to see what happens. Uh, if you want to support the fact that I'm doing this, if you want to support the effort and uh, the engagement, if the news that I'm providing is of value to you, uh, then please consider supporting the show. Uh, super chat, a, 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 what do you call it, a sticker. Also, if you've never been on the show before, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do uh, things like this often uh, when it comes to, uh, and this is true of, uh, please consider subscribing uh, to my Twitter page, uh, to my Twitter account. So uh, if you're on Twitter, I know there are a lot of people watching this on Twitter, uh, please, um, please consider um following me. I guess following is, uh, you don't subscribe on Twitter, you follow. So please uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I see quite a few people have followed me on Twitter just in the last few hours. So uh, yeah, it'd be great to have, uh, if we can make it uh, into 32,000 followers in the next few hours as I continue to do this. According to Twitter, 696 people watched it on Twitter. I think that's over the three, uh, the two and a half hours that we've gone so far. I don't think that's all at once right now. All right, again, please, um, please consider uh, supporting the show financially. I, you know, I, this, is, uh, this is the way you show me that you think this is a value. Uh, thank you, Apollo Zeus. Uh, you can do like Apollo, just a dollar. Even that helps so much because it shows that you value it. That's value for value. Um, uh, I'm providing a value here. Hopefully, you can provide a value in return, whether it's a dollar, hundred dollars, I don't think you can do more than $500, but uh, happy to accept anybody who wants to do $500 uh, added on to uh, added on to the total. Um, all right, and don't forget to like the show. Imp important and valuable and easy and doesn't cost you anything. Uh, please uh, consider consider doing that. And, and by the way, one other thing you can do, uh, f some of you can do to really help uh, help this along. Please, if you can, uh, if you're on YouTube, if you could share this on Twitter, get more people to come over here. If you're on Twitter, share it on Twitter. That is whatever platform you're on. You could be on Facebook right now. You could be, uh, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, or, or YouTube. Uh, please just share this, uh, and and let's get more people over here so they can uh, they can at least uh, have an opportunity to hear my coverage and to hear my analysis. Uh, they might not like it and go off, but those of them that like it will will will, will gain a value. So please go on Twitter. Uh, share, share, share uh, this kind of stuff, and uh, and we can do it. We've got, um, as I said, it's both on Twitter and uh, on 
and on YouTube and on Facebook. Please use all those platforms uh, uh, to share this uh, and uh, retweet it. Uh, again, uh, Twitter is showing 700 people listening, although I don't, I don't know where they are exactly, but uh, yeah, 715 views right now. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, make it even bigger. Let's make it much bigger. Let's get, let's get all this up to thousands of views uh, while we're doing this live. And for that, I need your help in sharing. All right, Mark, um, are we headed towards World War III? If so, what do you think that would look like? No, I don't think we're heading towards World War III. Uh, you know, World War III is a confrontation between the United States and Russia or the United States and China. Um, and, and it probably would, would, entail, it would entail both. Um, but uh, Iran is insignificant. Iran is not important. This is the thing. Everybody thinks Iran is important. Everybody makes a big deal out of Iran. Everybody's afraid of Iran. But the reality is that Iran is not important. Uh, China and Russia are not going to go to war over Iran. Uh, China and Russia do not want to go to war with Israel. Uh, China and Russia are, are, are the only things that would make this a world war, and there is no world war here. There is no world war here. So uh, I, I, I encourage, uh, uh, so don't be worried about World War III. Now, World War III, a real World War III, with China and or Russia, is a nuclear war at the end of the day, or, or at least a constant terror of nuclear confrontation. So let's say uh, China and the United States get involved in a confrontation in the Pacific, a naval confrontation. The United States is not invading, is not invading uh, China. But imagine if the United States and China get into confrontation in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we would all be afraid that it would turn nuclear. But uh, that would not, that would not uh, mean, uh, right, that would not mean that it was, uh, well, how do I phrase this? Uh, the, that would not mean that it does turn nuclear. It would just be, mean that we would be very, very afraid. And in that sense, it, it's a very scary scenario. That's what a World War III would look like. If the United States, I don't know, enters into Ukraine with ground forces or Russia invades uh, Finland or Poland and thus brings in NATO, ground forces are deployed, American ground forces, European ground forces. Well, uh, that in and of itself wouldn't be horrific. What would be horrific, I mean, it would also be, mean the end of Russia, but what would be horrific is the risk now of nuclear war. And, and, and that is what is really scary about those scenarios. This year, as long as Iran does not have nuclear weapons and is not using nuclear weapons, this here is not nuclear war and is not the not, it, 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 it is not a uh, what do you call it a, a world war. This is not going to lead to world war. Uh, again, the Chinese and Russians do not have an incentive. Look, I, I I should caveat that by saying I did not think Putin had an incentive to 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 invade Ukraine. I didn't think he would do it. I did not think Iran had an incentive to use its territory to attack Israel. I thought they would uh, allow Hezbollah and other militias to do it. These are irrational actors. Who knows what they're willing to do? They're insane, right? Um, yeah, somebody, uh, Wanda Freeman says, the Western GDP, GDP of Western countries, I don't even know that that includes Korea, Japan, Singapore. I, I think the, uh, Australia is 40 trillion. Uh, the GDP of Russia is 0.8 trillion. So it just, I mean, these countries, even with China, uh, they're not a serious threat. They're really not, I mean, other than nuclear weapons. So, and they know it, they know that, right? They know how small they are. So they're, they're not gonna launch a nuclear war over Iran, which represents Islam, which is a threat both to, both to Russia and to China. All right, uh, let me just thank uh, Stephen Hopper. Thank you for the sticker. Apollo Zeus, thank you. Simon, his first super chat. So you too can be a first time super chatter. Simon, thank you. Really appreciate the support. John, thank you. Michael, thank you. John, of course, started us off with $20 and has given throughout the afternoon. So thank you, John. Thanks, Mike. Um, and uh, yes, you too can support the show through the, if you're listening live through the super chat. Please support the show also by just uh, sharing, sharing the show on Twitter and letting people know that it's going on so that uh, we can get as many people over here. All right, let me quickly look at the news. Uh, let me just update the screen. Um, 
and we still got a bunch of questions. Um, all right, uh, Bonnie says, why hasn't Israel launched missiles? You know, again, I don't know. I don't know what Israel's strategy exactly is here, um, but, uh, uh, but uh, my expectation is uh, two. One, right now, Israel's all of its energy, all of its focus is geared towards uh, self-defense. This is going to be difficult. It's not going to be difficult because of the sophistication of the Iranian weapon systems. It's going to be difficult because of the sheer number of projectiles thrown at Israel, in particular, in particular, uh, it, it, you know, if Hezbollah enters, we're talking about thousands, thousands of missiles launched towards Israel. Now, the Israeli Air Force will take out the launches as quickly as they appear, but they will still get off hundreds, if not thousands, of missiles towards Israel, and that could easily be targeted at uh, Israeli population centers. For example, there is now a red alert over the ta town of Sneer, which is in northern Israel, in the Gal northern Galilee, um, and uh, that is probably a launch from Hezbollah from Lebanon. So maybe Hezbollah is already launching. And remember, when Hezbollah launches, it's not going to be military facilities they're launching at. They'll launch at anything, at anything. Um, so it's just a sheer number. So Israel's just focused. You want to deal with this. There's a limit to how much they can launch at you. You want to take care of that. And then you want to retaliate. You want to retaliate. Uh, with what you have. Now, for all we know, Israel has launched missiles. We don't know that they haven't. So I don't know. You don't know. I haven't seen any reports on it. Israel hasn't admitted it, certainly, but might, ne ne might not admit it. So we just don't know. Fog of war, what the details of what's happening there. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, this is bad. Uh, so uh, land attack cruise missiles have been spotted flying over the uh, western region no, the way, uh, no, uh, over uh, the region of eastern Iraq towards Israel. Eastern Iraq. Okay, so it's hard to tell if it's north or south. So now you've got cruise missiles. So Israel now has to take down cruise missiles. So it's got to deploy aircraft for the drones. It's got to deploy aircraft for the cruise missiles. And then uh, this will be a real test for Israel's arrow defense uh, system. So the arrow, um, arrow anti-cruise missile defense system uh, will be stretched now to take care of these. Sources are reporting that both U.S. and British aircraft are airborne over Syria and Jordan, assisting Israeli Air Force with interception of Iranian one-way suicide drones. Good for the Americans, good for the, uh, for the Brits. Uh, now's the time, guys. Anybody who wants to support Israel, now's the time. Uh, Germany, if you want to send some airplanes. France, France? Anybody there, France? You want to you wanna send some airplanes to support? This is, uh, this is civilization, guys. What Iran represents is the end of the West. What Iran represents is Sharia, global Sharia law. This is the time to step up. Step up. Um, so, so far, it looks like U.S. and British aircraft are helping Israel to uh, intercept Iranian one-way suicide dr uh, uh, drones. Okay, also... Lebanon has announced the closure of its airspace to any further commercial flights until further notice. Very much not surprising there. I'm surprised it's taken them uh, so long. Um, all right, let's see. Um, across the Middle East, the airspace of Egypt, Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, parts of Iran are now closed to commercial uh, flights. Um, okay. We've announced all that. Uh, okay, we're going to skip that. Uh, t -t 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 Let's see. Okay. We'll follow up there in a minute. Okay, Adam says, uh, no question, just dollars and disagree. After losing Libya, Hitler had to stop the Battle of Britain for lack of fuel. Trying for the Baku oil fields was the only chance. Look up Stalingrad on the map. No, I know where Stalingrad is. It was the last obstacle before Baku. Maybe, but um, I, you know, my guess is, and, and maybe this is not a good example, maybe we can find other examples, uh, that Hitler made a lot of strategic mistakes during World War II. And that's what evil does. That's what evil does. So 
whether opening a second fund was the only alternative he had to get to Baku once he couldn't get to the oil fields in Saudi Arabia through Northern Africa. Maybe that's the case. Um, I don't know. But uh, it, it, what I do know is that evil is, at the end of the day, impotent and incapable and will lose. And, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't trust a, a, any of this stuff, right? I don't, I, that is, I trust that the, uh, that the bad guys will lose and show their incompetence over and over again, both strategically and tactically. Shrug Life, uh, thank you, $20, really, really appreciate that. Thank you, Adam, for the support, even if you disagree. <laughs> really appreciate it, thanks, Adam. Uh, John Skogan, thank you uh, for the $20, uh, first super chat on a live stream. So we get, we're getting a lot of first time super chats uh, support, so I really, really appreciate uh, all of you guys. Uh, thank you. Um, U.S. officials have stated that they expected Israel to respond, whether they are casualties or not, and that this response will directly target the Iranian armed forces. Well, I hope it targets the nuclear facilities. I really hope it targets the nuclear facilities. Uh, if it doesn't target the nuclear facilities, this will go down as the biggest historical missed opportunity ever, at least in the Middle East, biggest, right? And, and just, again, imagine this happening right now with all of us worried that one of those cruise missiles has a nuclear tip warhead. Just imagine. David Chad, uh, $50, also first time super chat. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. Uh, really appreciate the support. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, again, I'll, I'll remind everybody to like the show before you leave. If you want to support the Iran Book Show, you can use a sticker, you can use a super chat, you can be a first timer, multi timer. Uh, we've got everybody here today. Uh, feel free if you like this analysis, if you value what I do, if you want to support it, please consider making a uh, making a contribution and supporting the show uh, over the long run. Again, I've gone, we've already gone two and a half hours. I, I suspect today will be the longest show I ever do. Uh, because I'm just going to keep going as long as there's news breaking, and there's going to be news breaking for hours still. Uh, so we will stay on. Uh, I'll see how my throat holds up, but so far, so good. Uh, we have 200, over 200 likes. Please keep those likes coming. It helps with the algorithm. And please share the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any way you can. Try to get as many people over here. Try to get them to watch it on Twitter. We've got 896 views on Twitter. Uh, so we're going strong. Uh, Mario Nafal, who's generally pretty non-objective and horribly anti-Israeli often, and just, just horrible generally, has 49,300 live views right now. So um, let's get mine over 1,000 at least, a, a little bit of competition for uh, Mario, for the, for the uh, rational side, uh, the, the pro-reason side of, uh, of this particular equation. Also, if you're watching on uh, Twitter, and you, uh, you, know, you don't follow me, please consider following me on Twitter. And, uh, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to be following my follow numbers to see if I'm getting any additional follows. Uh, so far, uh, a few, but uh, let's try to see if we can get uh, significant numbers uh, while I run this on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, yeah, mo there's footage now uh, showing uh, cruise missiles over eastern Iraq. Okay, so uh, definitely Iran has, almost definitely Iran has launched cruise missiles against uh, Israel. Um, uh, here's another one. Uh, pictures of Iran. Uh, Iran has just shared a video of its um, uh, drones and missiles, uh, and the missiles used in its attack against it. It's, it's already tooting its own horn and posting videos of, of uh, scary looking drones and, and they're tiny these drones but you know they, they, they have explosives in them and they can do real damage as the Ukrainians know well um, all right glad to see that America is saying that uh, whether they are casualties or not they uh, they anticipate an Israeli response and I guess support it as such Apollo Zeus thank you for the support 
Uh, again, David and John, thank you for the first time super chats. That's amazing. And David did $50. $50. That's very, very generous. Thank you. All right, let's keep going with the questions. Um, uh, Bonnie asked about launch missiles. I think they'll wait and do it separately. I, uh, I see Saracen. You think this is the break that Netanyahu needs? The U.S. wanted him out of the government. It feels like the U.S. has to backtrack and have Bibi stay. Well, I mean, Bibi is not going anywhere until the end of what's going on in Gaza. I, I, I think it's clear. Uh, he hopes that he can win, that he can somehow score some form of victory, um, it, whether in Gaza versus Iran or whatever, and that will somehow save his political career. I, I, don't, I think he's doomed. I, I, I don't think uh, Israel, the Israelis, will attribute a victory to him. Um, I, I think any Israeli prime minister would do very much the same things as Netanyahu has done that are positive. Um, and uh, I, I, I do think he's finished politically. Uh, in the long run, but in the short run, I, I don't see anybody getting rid of him, right? I don't see anybody getting rid of him. By the way, this video that the Iranians have put out about their drones and their missiles also show explosions, and you can see the kind of damage that these can do, at least in a propaganda video. Um, you can imagine hundreds of these being fired. Now, again, most of them won't make it because uh, the Israeli Air Force will knock them out of the sky, and now it it, it, if this is true, it sounds like both American aircraft and uh, British aircraft are helping uh, the Israelis uh, knock these drones out of uh, the sky. So uh, it, it, is, uh, it is going to be interesting. All right, that is still the video. All right, um, thank you, Icy. JJ Jigbees, how likely is it I'll get out of Israel this week? Really chose a great time to come, to, come visit. Yeah, stay safe, stay safe. Um, it's going to be difficult to get out of Israel this week. Now, uh, they, they, they might have some charter flights um, where, that they uh, put out, especially to get uh, Americans who are stuck there out, but it, it'll probably be difficult to get early in the week. Maybe later in the week, uh, you might be able to get out between Iranian offensives and Israeli offensives. You might, there might be a, a window of opportunity to get out of Israel, but uh, yeah, you're right in the thick of things uh, right there. I don't know, it'd be interesting to hear from you, JJ, of air raid si uh, uh, sirens gone off where you are. You're probably more in the center of Israel, and my understanding uh, is that none of the drones have yet approached, but it will be interesting if you want to let us know here in the chat if you hear air raid shelters and if you're evacuated to an air raid shelter. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Iranian state media is now claiming that the Iranians have launched uh, ballistic missiles. Now, ballistic missiles would only take, uh, I think, a few minutes to reach Israel. So we're talking about less than 20 minutes. So it's, um, I mean, we heard about the launch a few minute, minutes ago. We haven't heard anything hitting Israel. It's 542 when uh, this was posted. This is uh, assumed that 10 minutes, so within the next 10 minutes, we should hear of either impact in Israel or uh, something coming down. Um, I don't expect Jerusalem to be hit. Jerusalem's a holy place for Islam, so it's unlikely they will target Jerusalem, so you're probably safe in Jerusalem. It will be interesting to see. Uh, JJ Zigby says he's not heard any air raid shelters, sirens, and he's in Jerusalem. Uh, but if they've launched ballistic missiles, again, the arrow defense, uh, uh, the arrow system, will be, I think this is the first ballistic missiles fired at Israel. Um, uh, their air defense systems will be challenged. They, I believe, have the best in the world. They have both Patriot systems and Arrow, uh, Israeli-made systems and American-made systems. This is, um, uh, this is uh, you know, test time for Israeli, Israel's uh, defensive capabilities. Scary stuff, ballistic missiles, scary stuff. Again, these are the kind of missiles they could be in a different world or in a, in, in a few years, uh, this, they could be, uh, include a, a, a ballistic uh, nuclear, a nuclear weapon tipped by a nuclear weapon. Um, uh, check my message on the US KC-135 just a few minutes ago. I, I was monitoring different feeds um, for OSNET information. 
Uh, where did you write this, Luca? Where did Luca write this? Did you write it on the chat or is that in Twitter? Well, let me. Ch oh, there's Luca. Okay. Um, the U.S. KC-135 tanker has an electric failure and has been heard speaking with Kuwaiti air traffic control and is returning to uh, air, uh, to the air base in Qatar. Uh, three people on board, nothing war related, looks like. Okay, good, that's good. Um, thank you, uh, Luca, really appreciate uh, you uh, tracking that. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on, so it's hard to track everything. Uh, but, uh, but yes, um, all right. Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, a number of people are saying they did not expect uh, Iran to respond because that would give Israel a, a license to hit inside Iran, which include nuclear targets. Israel should do that as quickly and as soon as possible before the Iranians have a chance to move whatever precious stuff they have. I hope Israel has the intelligence to, to, the, the intelligence, uh, to be able to flag that and to be able to track it and be able to attack it no matter where it is, no matter where the nuclear uh, materials are located. Um, uh, all right, people are saying four to 500 drones launched. Most of them are already being shot down, so don't worry too much. Um, I mean, it is pretty insane that we have so much so much real, li you know, live information. I mean, we, we're following the war as it happens in real time because primarily it's an area war. Okay, Andrew. Andrew says, uh, America, is still, uh, America is, is, is still just enough to support Israel over its enemies, but its wavering support recently is disturbing. If America ever turned against Israel, it would be a new low of betraying principles of justice. Yes. And you can see that possible, both on the right and on the left. America is, is slowly but steadily turning away from Israel. And uh, it, it's, it's super, super scary. Uh, I see Saracen. Uh, with the anti Netanyahu protests, a BB attempt for judicial reform, and now the attack from Iran, do you fear Israel may come under military rule? No, I don't think so. There's no appetite. There's no body in Israel who would want that. Uh, th there is no inclination towards that. So, no, I, I, I don't think that is. Uh, I don't think that is uh, going to happen. All right, this is interesting. Um, the first wave of Iranian one-way suicide drones expected to enter Israeli airspace in about 15 minutes. That would actually uh, place them at about the same time as the ballistic missiles hit. So it looks like that was coordinated that the drones would hit at about the same time as the ballistic missiles. Again, we'll know within 10 minutes, we'll know by 6 uh, p.m. East Coast time whether uh, the ballistic missiles indeed were launched and uh, are either hitting Israel or being knocked out of the sky by the Israelis. You would expect any minute now air raid shelters, you, air raid sirens, you actually would, I would have expected them already uh, a, a little while ago because uh, as soon as Israel detected a ballistic missile launch, you would expect that air raid sirens uh, uh, would have gone off uh, in uh, parts of Israel in anticipation of, uh, you know, to give people enough time to prepare and to, uh, and to get into the air raids. So, you know, I just don't, I don't know that I believe that the ballistic missiles have been fired yet. It just seems, all right, maybe no, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, footage appearing to show Iranian ballistic missiles at high altitudes as they fly towards Israel. All right, maybe. Maybe, but that, that, I mean, we'll know very, very quickly here, very quickly. Um, let's see, Iranian one-way suicide bombers, land attack cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles have now all been spotted airborne over Iraq, heading towards Israel. All right, uh, Iran's air defense forces, um, the Iranian, uh, the, Iranian um, re the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, if airspace force has deployed the Kvant IL-222, whatever, systems around strategic government and military sites in Tehran and other cities for fear of Israeli, um, fear of Israeli counterattack. I'm not too worried about that. I think Israel knows how to overcome all that stuff once they decide uh, to attack, and hopefully they'll, they'll attack again sooner rather than later. Timing is important. Israel, don't dither like you did in Gaza. Attack, attack, attack. Attack soon, 
and with full force. Don't hold anything back. Destroy the bastards. All right. Um, Andrew says, after 9-11, America could have established the principle of rational self-defense in action. Instead, it pursued a naive, self-sacrificial Christian policy of evading, destroying the enemy to help Iraq, to bring them democracy, and to bring uh, civilization to Afghanistan. Absolutely. And that is blown up in America's face. You need to win wars. You need to win wars decisively, thoroughly, unequivocally. You need the enemy to know that you will destroy them. And this is why Israel needs to respond quickly and with massive force. Massive force targeted at command and control everything in Iran from nuclear facilities on down. They need to be, they, they, the, the Iranians need to feel like they could be attacked anywhere at any time. And those drone factories need to be destroyed. Um, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, James says, always the best news, Sosh Iran. Thanks for hosting this. Appreciate it, James. Didn't even know. I had a plan for 3 o'clock. Didn't know this was happening. Uh, it, you know, it kind of broke as I was, uh, you know, just minutes before I started, and that's why I shifted to this topic. And I've been going on since. Um, let's see. Uh, Chicken Wings says, America must not betray Israel and Ukraine. I agree. I agree, but I fear, I fear. Um, Daniel, should Israel flatten southern Lebanon preemptively? Not right now. Right now it needs to focus on defense, but it should have months ago. It should have years ago, and it certainly should have after October 7th. I, 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 can't, ima I can't believe that Israel has put itself in a position where Hezbollah can attack while the Iranians attack all at the same time. Uh, really horrific. Okay, I'm going to... I'm... I'm um, Oh, here we go. We've got Pray for Iran Victory MAGA. Make America great again. There you go. There's your MAGA friends. I'm going to block this. I, 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 we don't need... Uh, we don't need... Um, um, we don't need pro-Iranians on this channel. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's see. Where are we? How ready is Israel without the help from any country? It would be hard for Israel, very hard. I mean, uh, Israel relies on global supply chains. It relies on uh, uh, ammunition and, and weapon systems from the United States. It does not produce all the weapons and certainly not all the ammunition that it, it uses. Uh, right now, uh, it, you know, it, it is being overwhelmed by the sheer number of uh, drones and missiles being launched at it. And I think the consequence of that is that they, the, the Brits and the Americans are helping out. They are, they are shooting down... Uh, they're shooting down what they can uh, that is targeted at Israel. Uh, the extent of that, I don't know. Again, these are just rumors. Fog of war. We don't know what's actually happening. We don't know if the American Air Force has been deployed. But the, I, the fact that, uh, that uh, Biden is going to address the nation soon, then, um, uh, then that suggests that, uh, that yes. All right. Uh, Tricycle just said CNN confirming first wave of ballistic missiles. That, so you hear it on your Iran book show first and then on CNN. Why do I only have 300 people watching live? Why aren't they several thousand people watching live? I mean, I'm breaking news before CNN. And I'm not the only one breaking that news because I'm getting it from somewhere. But uh, so far, everything I've reported uh, has been confirmed a little later on. Developing sources over the years helps. Um, all right, does shrapnel rain down when drones are knocked out? Yeah, probably, but most of these drones are being knocked out uh, over the desert in Syria or in uh, Jordan. So uh, very little uh, reason to think. Um, all right, Israeli intelligence officials have reportedly detected the launch of dozens of one-way suicide drones. We know that. Land attack cruise missiles from Iran, as well as Iraq towards Israel. The drones and missiles are believed likely to target an Israeli Air Force base in the Negev Desert and locations in the Golan Heights. All right? Um, that, is, uh, that is interesting. Um, okay. We will see if that pans out. So uh, Golan Heights and the Israeli Desert. The Golan Heights are, are, are way in the north, and uh, uh, the, uh, the Negev is way in the south. Uh, it will be interesting. It will be interesting. Uh, Biden is returning to the White House and is supposedly addressing the nation in a little bit. 
we will see if that happens. Martin Anderson, thank you. Really appreciate uh, that. Uh, I, I know in, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in the currency, uh, that's a lot. In dollars, not so much, but I appreciate the support very much. Frank, $50, thank you. You're on with this journalistic hat in these trying times. Thank you, Frank. I really appreciate it. I, I try. I try to bring both uh, commentary and journalism uh, to it. Uh, Luca, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Yaron. Am Yisrael Chai. That means uh, the, the people of Israel live. All right, let's see. Uh, Andrew asks, what are the ideas that lead to leftist pacifism? Well, it's the idea that you cannot judge others. It's Christianity, basically. Christianity has a huge impact on the left. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the morality that says, talked about it before, all lives ha have value. To some extent, that comes from uh, Kant. It's, uh, but it's really the lack of self-esteem, the, the, the lack of uh, self-assertion, uh, the lack of moral standing, the lack of being able to say, I'm right, they're wrong. I'm good, they're evil. Okay, several more videos of uh, Iranian ballistic missiles spotted over the southern Iraqi city. So if that's a southern city, then it's probably targeted towards the Negev. Um, Israel, by the way, in the Negev has its nuclear facility. So Israel does have a nuclear reactor in the Negev. Uh, so I, I can't believe that uh, Iran would target that, but that is probably the most protected facility in the world. So I, I, I can't believe that anything could, could penetrate that, but it's more likely that they're attacking an Air Force, Air Force base there. Um, but whether they could actually aim it well enough to, to actually hit it uh, is hard to tell. We will see how good these weapons are. And um, Again, if this is out of southern Iraq, then this is traveling over Jordan. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Jordan uh, has the wherewithal uh, to knock some of these down. Jordan certainly has, uh, is not interested in seeing uh, the, um, uh, seeing Iran be successful here, I don't think. Um, an Italian news channel, uh, has uh, a Chiron saying that U.S. and French fighter jets have taken off. Um, yeah, good for the French. I mean, I, this would be amazing if the French are participating. Uh, that would be incredibly exciting and, uh, uh, and, and unusual, right, for the French to actually side with somebody, uh, with the good guys <laughs> for a change. But the French have been very good on Ukraine, so... Uh, good for them. Uh, Louis, uh, Louise, uh, thank you. Uh, first time super chat. Really appreciate it. She writes, uh, victory for Israel. Keep them safe. Thank you, Iran. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything. I mean, I'm curious. Yeah, we should be hearing about ballistic missiles hitting Israel very, very soon, if not now, right? Uh, and I don't see anything, anything around that. Um, but ballistic missiles travel very, very fast. They should be there. The, the first drones should be hitting Israeli airspace um, any minute now. Uh, so uh, that is something to watch for, particularly in the Golan Heights. That would mean Israel is knocking them down over Syria. Those would be flying in from Syria. Um, so we will see. Now it's saying first Iranian drones in 10 to 20 minutes. That was eight million minutes ago. So again, yeah, any minute now uh, from 6 p.m. on, yeah, really from 6 p.m. on, we should start seeing significant action over the skies of Israel. So Israel shooting down stuff. Israel um, taking hits, uh, whatever happens, it's going to happen in the next 10 or so minutes. Um, James says, my understanding is the ballistic missiles are rare in modern warfare. Could they be nuclear? No, they're not nuclear. They do not have, uh, they do not have the nuclear capabilities. The Iranians do not. 
so no, they're not nuclear. It, they're, they're not ready. The Russians have used uh, ballistic missiles against Ukraine. Uh, uh, cruise missiles are much more um, common. Uh, they are, uh, these are medium range. Remember, Iran is far away. If you want to hit something quickly, the only way they can do it and get to the target quickly is a uh, ballistic missile. So uh, uh, it's, not, it's not that unusual for them to be using a ballistic missile. Uh, all right, thank you. Who asked that? That was James. Thank you, James. Really appreciate it. Um, let's see, Rafael. Millet went back to Argentina to form a crisis committee regarding this war. I will try to coordinate actions with Western leaders. Interesting, very interesting. I mean, again, one of the things I like about Millet the most is that he's not one of these crazy libertarians who thinks everything is Israel's fault and, uh, and, and Israel are the bad guys and we should side with the Palestinians and side with Hezbollah and side with everybody else. Um, and uh, the fact that he's supporting Ukraine and not Russia, the fact that he's supporting Israel and not Hamas is a huge thumbs up for me to, to Millet. And of course, as you know, I met Millet last week, got to shake his hand, got photos taken with him and handed him uh, my, a copy of my book, Free Market Revolution, uh, which he promised to read. We'll see. Jennifer, thank you. Uh, thank you for all of your work you're on. My thoughts are with uh, the Israeli people and your family. Thank you. I appreciate that. My thoughts are with my family as well. Uh, I hope they're safe. I assume they are. I haven't heard anything about Israeli air raid shell, uh, sirens going off yet, which is good news because they go well in advance of the actual attack of anything hitting. hitting. As I said already, Russia will not get involved. Don't worry, Russia will not get involved. Um, all right, Israeli Ministry of Defense will hold a situational assessment in roughly five hours at 6 a.m. to decide how to respond. So uh, yes, I don't expect Israel to respond before they have that meeting. Um, that meeting is at 6 a.m. Uh, Israel time. So um, uh, sometime uh, around 1 a.m., so uh, 1 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. Uh, so uh, yeah, Russia will not get involved. Russia has no vested interest here. Uh, Russia is not going to sacrifice its interests uh, for the Iranians. Uh, Russia would like to continue buying Iranian drones, but Russia probably has now the manufacturing capability to build the Iranian drones themselves. And um, they're not rushing to Iran's support uh, at the end of the day. Russians don't want to see Islam win. They don't want them to lose, but they don't want them to win. They don't want them to lose because uh, this distracts the Americans. Uh, just like China, this is China supports the Iranians only in the sense that this is distracting the Americans, but it's not anything they want to get involved in. Iranian is not using Russian drones. It's using their own drones. It's using Shahad drones. Indeed, Russia is using Iranian drones. It's the other way around, but the drones are clearly Shahad drones. These are cheap, big, uh, uh, and, and they have hundreds of them. Uh, they've already sent anywhere between 100 to 500 drones Israel's way, um, uh, Israel's way. Okay, Michael asks, I wonder if this drone attack is a diversion for a larger strike. There is no larger strike. Iran is very far from Israel. There's nothing else they can do. Remember that um, they're also launching cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. That might be the larger strike. The really bad one, right, the really bad one is, uh, is the possibility of Hezbollah strike. That could be the largest strike. That could be the really, really dangerous strike. Lucas says what I said earlier. He says, be careful with forecasts about Russia, um, uh, you know, because I forecast that Russia would not invade Ukraine. So I was wrong about, uh, about Russia because... Um, I didn't expect Putin to be this, as stupid as he turned out to be, um, or, or, or su as suicidal as he turned out to be. So I agree, Luca, it's hard to predict the irrationality of people like Putin. But again, the incentive is not there. The, 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 uh, Putin is, is distracted by Ukraine. That's a, he, he's busy. He's busy. Um, you know, if, if, if Russia wanted to intervene, uh, they could have uh, activated the air defense systems uh, of their troops in Syria. They have not, as far as we know. Again, I'm going to make the prediction knowing that sometimes my predictions are false. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what other people are thinking. I cannot predict the future. Um, 
but I do not expect Russia to get involved. I, I, I think it doesn't make any sense for them. Again, they're irrational, so who knows? But they, if they would have wanted to get involved, they're gonna. If they get involved, they will go. They are going to reveal how weak they really are. Plus, does Russia really want a confrontation with America? And America has planes in the air shooting down drones. I don't think so. All right. Um, U.S. defense and intelligence officials have now stated that this is uh, that this ongoing attack by Iran is the worst case scenario that Israel had been preparing for, and that this could cause a major war across the Middle East. Okay, these are the kind of predictions that the Americans like to make. And, you know, what is the major war? Who is, who, Iran is far from Israel. Um, yes, they can continue to launch missiles and drones for days, and the Houthis can do the same, and the proxies can do the same. Uh, but, you know, uh, and, and Hezbollah can. That is the real risk. Let me say again. The number one risk for Israel right now, the number one risk for Israel right now, is that Hezbollah joins this, that Hezbollah launches against Israel. Hezbollah has 130,000 missiles, 130,000 rockets um, that they can launch. That is a major escalation. That would be horrific. That would involve a land war, which Israel would invade southern Lebanon and try to destroy Hezbollah. Uh, hasn't happened yet. We haven't heard yet of any launches, maybe one from Hezbollah into Israel. So that is what I really, if there's any real, I mean, stress and tension, uh, real fear, that would be the fear. I don't think Iran can do that much damage to Israel. We'll see in the next few minutes. Uh, we haven't heard anything yet. It's already 6.06 and uh, the drone should have entered Israeli space and... Um, uh, cruise missiles, okay. Um, all right, so multiple Israeli KC-707. These are airplanes that are used to refuel other airplanes in the air. So there are several of these all over the country. As the Israeli Air Force is trying to down the drones and cruise missiles, this is like the Battle of Britain in World War II. I mean, the stakes are not quite as big, but the Battle of Britain, where the, the, uh, the Air Force was just up there, they would land, refuel, up, back up to fight against the Germans. It's, it's what really changed the dynamic of the war uh, in a sense of aerial superiority, which was German and shifted to British American after the Battle of Britain. Uh, and somebody who's a World War II buff will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, m multiple, so. Uh, as the Air Force is up there, the, the, you know, they are refueling uh, in real time. So in real time. I still have not heard of uh, launches, and I'm not sure we will, and I'm not sure when we will, of launches of the Arrow missile system, anti-drone and anti-ballistic missile and anti-cruise missile system. Uh, they've been used in a lot against uh, stuff that the Houthis has sent over, but I still haven't heard here that any of those have been used, that it would be really interesting to see if they are used. It's too bad Israel has not yet deployed its laser missile defense system. Um, they need it right now. They need it right now. I mean, the, the laser missile defense system is, uh, um, is uh, it would be it's super cheap and super easy and super fast in attacking something like that. Um, all right. Let's see. All right, nothing there. I'm just checking different channels to see if there's anything super uh, relevant as we scan this. All right, what's that? Um, yeah, we saw that. That's not new. All right, Jacob, thank you. Chris, thank you. E flat major, thank you. E flat major, that's the first super chat. Really appreciate that. Don't forget, guys, if you're watching, there's about 350 people watching right now. Like the show. Don't forget to like the show. Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you know, hopefully we can have hundreds of likes uh, for this show. And uh, don't forget to support the show. Um, uh, support the show with a sticker here if you're watching live. If you're on uh, Twitter, if you're listening to this later, you can support the show on Patreon. Uh, you can also support the show on... Um, um, Patreon as well as 
Um, um, one second, my sister just uh, uh, WhatsApped me. I'm on live now. <laughs> my sister who's in central Israel um, WhatsApped me. We are a bit scared from your perspective, should we be? And I said, Yes, they should be. Um, uh, let me just let me just add something comforting. <laughs> uh, probably military, not civilian. All right, I still think the targets are military, and I think that m almost all of these cruise missiles and drones and everything else are going to be knocked out of the, out of the air. Um, there is also a, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, supposedly, President Biden warned Iran not to escalate. Um, and, uh, you know, we will see what happens now as a response. Iranians in Tehran are celebrating the aggression against Israel, so the people on the street, not that many, from the video I'm seeing with Iranian flags. Um, you know, uh, just let's see what else, anything breaking news here. Uh, initial reports, yeah, ballistic missiles. Oh, so now uh, um, ballistic missiles launched from Yemen as well. So you've also got, so you've got, also got the Houthis get, getting in on the action uh, with Yemen uh, and um, you know, that'll, again, just stretch the air defense systems that Israel, uh, you know, the air defense systems that Israel has. So you've got uh, drones, probably uh, several hundred, launched from uh, Iran, which are crossing over both Jordan and mainly Syria. It, Israel sounds like the Israeli Air Force is knocking those out of the sky, although it does sound like we have rumors that the, both the British and uh, the American Air Forces, probably probably uh, aircraft carrier based, so really uh, Navy, uh, pilots are shooting down drones uh, with uh, the Israelis. The Houthis do have ballistic missiles, not the most advanced, not the most sophisticated, but they do have ballistic missiles. Israel's already shot some down. Uh, that is what the Arrow uh, defense system is for. I'm, I'm not too worried about the Houthis' ballistic missiles. They're more likely to hit the desert, the more likely to be shut down. I'm much more worried about just the sheer quantity. And again, my main worry, I will repeat this, and I'll repeat this throughout the night, my main worry will continue to be, is, continues to be the Hezbollah. The Hezbollah, 130,000 uh, warheads, missiles, rockets of various types, all targeted at Israel. That could be an overwhelming, overwhelming attack against Israel. That would be very difficult for the Israeli defense system to, uh, to manage. Of course, they can't launch 130,000 all at once, uh, but hundreds at a time, thousands at a time is certainly possible. Uh, and the Israeli Air Force distracted right now, knocking down drones, knocking down cruise missiles. What happens if Hezbollah unleashes their rockets? That's what the Iron Dome is for, and there is an Iron Dome in the north of Israel. Uh, I don't think it's, it's got the capacity of the Iron Dome in the south, but it has significant capacity. And then the question will be, will it be able to cope with the sheer volume uh, that Hezbollah could unleash if, it, if they decide to do so? Nebulisks, thank you. Appreciate the support. Jacob, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate the support. Anonymous user says, thank you for the objective and information, informative news. See Britain Dragonfly, interesting technology. I will look into that. Thank you, anonymous user. I appreciate the support. Um, yeah, let me just say, I mean, uh, I, I, as many of you know, I, I often make predictions that don't come true. My analysis of why I don't think Russia should, will get involved, I think will pan out. But I was wrong about, uh, about um, uh, you know, Putin invading Ukraine. Uh, so who knows? Hey, Lior, it's nice to see you on my chat. Uh, it's, thank you for being here. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything new. As I said, 
if the Iranians launched ballistic missiles and those ballistic missiles, um, uh, you know, actually succeeded in entering Israeli airspace, they would have already done so. So we are now way beyond the time that that would happen. Uh, also, if uh, drones were going to hit Israel, then now is when they would be hitting, and I see no indication that air raid uh, sirens have gone off in Israel, in northern Israel, or that uh, there have been drone hits. I, I suspect, okay, here's, um, yeah, residents in northeastern and southeastern Israel. So this is Haifa area, have been told to remain near bomb shelters until further notice. Just notice near bomb shelters. So if the drones had penetrated Israeli airspace, then they would have been told to enter the air raid shelters. So uh, the fact that the drones have not suggests to me that so far the Israeli Air Force, as well as whoever else is helping the Israeli Air Force, have succeeded in uh, uh, you know, uh, shooting down the, um, uh, the drones that have been sent uh, towards, uh, uh, towards Israel. That's right, I'm confusing East and West. Thank you, Leo, for correcting me. Uh, we're talking about the Golan Heights and the Negev, the south of Israel. Uh, so the south of Israel, probably from the Houthis, particularly Elat, and, uh, and any military bases in that area, and the north of Israel, uh, uh, over the, uh, the Iranian drones that are crossing through Syria. Again, I still don't see any suggestion that anything hit the ground. That suggests to me that at least the first wave has been uh, mostly shot down. Uh, J.J. Jigby says he was in Haifa earlier this week. Stay in Jerusalem. I think you're safe in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem the next few days. Uh, you're much safer over, over there. Yes, I mean, the difference between east and west in Israel is 30 miles. That's it. <laughs> from, from the river to the sea is 30 miles. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, um, I'm surprised nothing is hit yet, or, or we haven't got any reports of Israel launching arrows or Iron Dome or anything like that to shoot down, uh, shoot down these, uh, uh, these rockets and missiles uh, that are coming across. Also, uh, I mean, I really am happy so far to say, happy is maybe strong, that uh, so far Hezbollah is staying out of this. I mean, again, that is the big deal. The big deal is, will Hezbollah stay? And, and if they do, for how long will they stay out of it? All right. Uh, Jacob says, uh, what's the best Twitter feed to follow for this news? I'm following O-S-I-N-T. O-S-I-N-T Defender. O-S-I-N-T Defender. Um, that, I think they have so far, over the last few months, have had the fastest... Uh, news uh, that I've seen. Israeli TV reporting 2 a.m. is the time they should be here. Um, 2 a.m. All right. I, what I got was um, now. That is, ballistic missiles should have already uh, arrived. So I don't, I don't quite understand that. Ballistic missiles should not take very long. Cruise missiles take a couple of hours. They also, you know, should have arrived or should be arriving very, very soon. I think 2 a.m., 2 a.m. is what? It's uh, this uh, seven-hour difference. Um, God, so six plus seven is one. So we're talking about another, another 40, 40 minutes. Could be, could be. So it could be that they arrive in 40 minutes. Uh, we'll see what arrives because... Uh, my guess is that, uh, that the Israeli Air Force is busy knocking them down over Syria and that, uh, that few of them will actually arrive. It's 1.18 a.m. in Israel now. Yeah, I did the math. It takes me a while. I'm pretty slow, particularly when I'm trying to read this and that and, and do everything else. Uh, but, but yes, it does look like, according to Israeli news at least, we've got another 40 minutes. Maybe that's why... They've been told to stay close to air raid shelters and not being, uh, not being encouraged to go to air raid shelters. So maybe uh, everything is a little slower than I expected it to be in terms of uh, the projection. Okay, that's useless information. Um, that is, let's see if anything here. We've got a bunch of congressmen standing with Israel, uh, this congressman, that congressman. Um, and then, of course, Israel... Um, 
Israel has, Israel has significant ballistic missile capabilities and significant cruise missile capabilities. I mean, significant. Uh, these are big missiles, unbelievably accurate missiles, missiles that would be very hard for the Iranians to knock out of the sky. I really don't know what the Iranians are thinking by doing this attack. Uh, you know, if, if Israel really wants to punish them, uh, they, uh, they will punish them. Um, All right, uh, so I guess I missed this, but uh, Israel officials have stated that they so far have seen no confirmation of ballistic missiles launched uh, by Iran towards Israel. Thank you, James, for pointing that out. Yes, I mean, that makes sense, because if, if the ballistic missiles had been launched, they would have already arrived. My guess is that the, um, that the videos that we saw were not ballistic missiles, but were cruise missiles. Um, and all old videos. You never know, of course, on, um, you never know on uh, the web what you're seeing when you're seeing a video, when it was actually shot, who shot it, uh, whether it's a video game. Sometimes you see videos that are claimed to be from a war zone and they're just video games, people playing on the video. All right, let's go back to questions. Um, Robert Nacia, spoiler alert, the good guys win. Well, most likely by far. Yeah, I think the good guys win. It's, it's uh, you know, two things are the question. One is, um, how badly are the good guys hurt? And the second question is, how decisive is the response? Israel needs to be unbelievably decisive, overwhelming, and strategic in their response. It, it needs to hit thoroughly, I mean, uh, systematically, every single thing uh, in Iran. That involves um, that involves um, uh, nuclear. The nuclear program needs to be hit and destroyed. Uh, and beyond that, they need to take out drone, uh, any kind of uh, military facilities where uh, that produce uh, that produce any kind of uh, any kind of warfare that can hurt Israel. They need to destroy the drone uh, factories. They need to destroy the missile factories. They need to destroy the capacity of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard to engage in war. And they need to do it, in my view, on a massive scale. I do not know what Israel's capabilities are, right? I mean, this is far away. They do have a massive, uh, uh, massive uh, cruise and ballistic missile capacity. But how many of those missiles do they have? I don't know. They can reach Iran easily. They can even reach Iran by plane. What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, payload can they drop on Iran if they fly all the way there? I don't know. Um, so it's, you know, again, it's, uh, I, I, you know, it, but that's what Israel needs to do. It needs to thoroughly, I mean, it needs to cause so much pain to the Iranians that the Iranian people might think, consider overthrowing this regime overthrowing this regime. All right. Um, let's see. All right. We got more questions here. Uh, anonymous user, thank you for, uh, for the objective and informative news. See Britain's... Oh, you, I already did that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Troy. Troy just came in with 500 Australian dollars. Thank you, Troy. Really, 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 really appreciate the support. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, particularly for a show like this, appreciate it. Ali says, why Iran haven't used full force in these attacks, including Hezbollah? Iran don't want to correct you in this, but Hezbollah is with an H. I thought it was a H, Hezbollah. Don't they pronounce it with H, Hezbollah? Uh, I, I don't think it's a H, Hezbollah. The Arabs say Hezbollah? I don't think so. Uh, but you know more than I do. With a name like Ali, you know Arabic better than I do. Um, why? I, I think for a couple of reasons. One is um, maybe they're waiting for Hezbollah for the second round. Maybe Hezbollah is a strategic card uh, to prevent Israel from going uh, all the way all the way out. Uh, maybe they, they they hold Hezbollah as a as a knife kind of as a sword, uh, and, and yeah, I know you're Arab, so that's why I said you know more than I do. Um, 
he says this with an H, so I will start calling it Hezbollah, not Hezbollah. Okay, Hezbollah. It is Hamas, right? Uh, not Hamas, but uh, I think that's right. Uh, but anyway, uh, they could be using it uh, to, to restrain Israel from crushing the Iranians. That's one. They could be waiting for a more strategic time to use the Hezbollah. It's also possible that internal, internal um, politics inside Lebanon are dictating that Hezbollah not be used. That is, that um, uh, Hezbollah might really suffer uh, in, in terms of its political standing within Lebanon if it got involved, that the Christians and the Sunnis in, uh, and the other Shiites in uh, Lebanon have told Hezbollah to stand down, that, uh, th they will, th th that they will take a significant political hit here. Um, th th that is all possible. It, it, it really is hard to tell. Of course, we don't know yet that Hezbollah is not involved. If this is a coordinated effort, and, and if the drones and, uh, and the missiles are not due to reach Israel until uh, for another 35 minutes, uh, then we won't know until, until 35 minutes. If, if the, you know, the, the missiles from Hezbollah will, uh, have instant impact, right? They're within minutes uh, because it's so close. It, 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 you know, it could be the Hezbollah is afraid. It could be the Hezbollah has told the Iranians, yeah, we don't want to do this because we don't want to be completely and utterly destroyed. Uh, Israel has made it clear that if Hezbollah, uh, you know, launches full throttle, Israel will attack it, including, including um, uh, in Beirut. And, uh, and that could be a, a, a significant disservice, right? All right. Um, Home Front Command instructions to residents in the northern Golan Heights, uh, the Netavim area, Dimona and Elat. So that's Dimona and Elat, that's uh, southern Israel. Um, and they uh, is that they should stay near sh uh, uh, shelters until further notice and wait the compulsory 10 minutes in case of alarm. Um, footage earlier showed what appeared to be, to be a high-altitude ballistic missile over Iraq could have been cruise missiles, yep, attached with additional rocket boosters for longer range. All right, I, mean, that, I guess that makes sense. That is the commentary about, about the cruise missiles. Um, all right, what are we doing here? Uh, stated by the Iranian mission to the UN regarding tonight's attack is, uh, ta, 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 uh, Article 51 of the UN Charter pertaining to legitimate defense. So this is an act of self-defense. Who cares? Uh, the UN should be abolished. Somebody asked about the UN, I thought. Maybe not. Um, let's see. A U.S. official has confirmed that U.S. forces in the Middle East are involved in the interception of Iranian one-way suicide drones. All right. Ho hopefully that is true. Um, and uh, from what I... So earlier, the Brits are helping as well. So that, uh, that is good. Uh, uh, and, and maybe the French. Uh, maybe there's somebody, somebody out of Italy said that uh, French fighters were, were, were leaving a NATO base uh, there. Um, all right, these are updates. Update is basically that the, uh, that the uh, ballistic missile videos that were shown earlier are probably cruise missiles with boosters to get them all the way to Israel. Uh, let's see. Uh, ta, ta, ta. Yes. Uh, Andrew, uh, what do you think of the line of reasoning from the right that isn't the, that it's the Biden administration's weakness that is causing global chaos and that during Trump there was relative peace? Well, I mean, there, there's certainly some truth to it. Weakness does encourage violence. And the uh, retreat from Afghanistan was about as weak and pathetic as you could imagine, and Biden's attitude towards Iran was weak and pathetic. You know, I know that, that you know, many of you don't believe me, but I don't believe the world viewed Trump as strong. They might have viewed him as unpredictable, but not as strong. And what I do think, what I do think, uh, I mean, remember that it is Trump that signed a peace deal, peace deal, can you imagine? Talk about weakness with the Taliban. And it's that peace deal that Biden was actually implementing by withdrawing. And behind the scenes, the Trump administration was 
actively negotiating with Iran to try to get a better deal. Uh, but he wasn't against negotiations. So I think at the end of the day, uh, I think it's American weakness, American weakness going down, going back to Reagan in the Middle East. Remember, Reagan saved Yasser Arafat in, in Beirut. Remember, Reagan did nothing when 244 Marines were killed by uh, an Iranian planned and financed Hezbollah in 1983. Reagan did nothing but lob a few bombs into the Baka Valley, which, which did nothing, impacted nobody, and had zero, um, and, and basically fled Lebanon with tail between his legs. So going back to Reagan, every single American administration has been weak, weak. So um, weakness is America. And therefore, I think that that is the cause of our problems. There's no question. If America was strong, a lot of this would not be happening. And that's true of Israel as well, by the way. If Israel is strong. The problem with Israel is that its deterrent capabilities have been weakened. It's, the, it's not the capabilities. It's their willingness to use it. Why hasn't Iran taken out the... Why hasn't Israel taken out the Iranian nuclear capabilities years ago as they promised, as Bibi promised, over and over and over and over again? Why should Iran believe that they'll do anything now? Why, uh, why, uh, why did Israel not destroy Hamas 20 years ago and in all the opportunities since? Well, what message did that said Hamas other than we can keep killing Israelis and they won't do anything to us? So it is Israeli and American weakness that emboldens evil. The good, when it's weak, emboldens evil, always, everywhere. Go back to Hitler, but you can go to all to the beginning of time. When, when the good is weak, evil takes advantage of it, always. If you want to stop war, then the good needs to get aggressive. It needs to end war. All right. Let's see. Um, Bree says, are your parents and friends safe? Well, I, nobody's safe. Uh, I, I don't know. Again, it depends what Hezbollah decides to do. Um, as you know, I have family in northern Israel, not in the Golan Heights, but in the Galilee and in Haifa. Uh, and, and in central Israel, it doesn't look like central Israel is the target. It looks like the target is southern and, uh, and northern Israel particularly the Golan Heights. I don't have any family there. But if Hezbollah enters, all of Israel is a target, particularly the north. Um, so there is, so far, they're as safe as they can be. But uh, the night in Israel is still young. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I know, because my sister was on here a minute ago, um, they are worried, they're scared. Uh, it, it is a very, very scary situation. And you feel, you feel helpless. You feel helpless because there's nothing you can do. You, you've got your family, you've got your kids, you've got, you know, and there's nothing you can do other than listen to the news and, 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 and watch, you know, watch everything that's happening around you and, and, uh, and, and hope for the best. But it's the helplessness, I think, that is most debilitating. My sister's still on the chat, so she is still here. Um, I, you know, I think, I think. Uh, <laughs> Um, hearing me talk is distracting at this point, and distraction is good at this point. So, uh, uh, oops, I keep, I keep missing this. Um, no, not that. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Um, no, you have uh, no questions. Don't forget, you can ask questions. Uh, focus the questions on, on what we're talking about now. I do have, I don't know, 10 questions on other topics. Maybe I will do them afterwards, or maybe I will do them t uh, tomorrow, next time we do a show. Uh, it, it's a little difficult to focus on unrelated questions uh, right now. All right, uh, Fuitux. Uh, fui, fui I don't know what Fuitux is. It's, uh, anyway, um, Iran's attack is designed in several stages, and this is translated from Arabic. Uh, Iran's attack is designed in several stages, and each stage will be more intense than the previous stage, depending on the conditions. A source tells Iran's semi-official Farsi uh, news agency. 
All right, I mean, my thoughts are going out um, to those pilots who are up in the air, who are going to spend many, many hours up in the air uh, shooting drones. It's like a video game. I mean, a video game with lives at stake. But they are going to be shooting drones for many hours uh, and, uh, and, and cruise missiles, uh, which are not easy to shoot down. Uh, the air defense crews that are, that are going to be on alert, uh, the missiles, uh, according to what we heard from Israel, missiles are supposed to hit in 25 minutes. So uh, all of those, uh, all of those um, uh, air defense uh, batteries are going to start working uh, right now. Uh, you know, they're full alert and will we start de deploying in, uh, you know, any time in the next 25 minutes. Um, all right, a source with the Israeli Defense Force has stated that Israeli Air Force, with assistance from the United States, Britain, and other allies, that's great to hear, uh, has already intercepted at least 100 Iranian one-day way suicide drones that were en route towards Israel. The problem is that these are very cheap, very easy to make drones. They can launch, they can continue to launch hundreds of these, at least for a while. This is why I think number one priority for Israel should be, and they should be launching now, in my view, if they can, uh, destruction of whatever drones the Iranians already have and the destruction of all drone factories in Iran. So I would like to hear about explosions all over Iran happening uh, in the ne starting in, uh, in a few hours from Israeli crews and ballistic missiles. They should... in. You know, again, Iran is holding back on ballistic missiles. They're holding back on, uh, partially because I don't know how well they'd work, and they're holding back on uh, Hezbollah and their uh, their efforts, uh, their ability to attack on the north. Uh, holding back, I think, in order to give them just strategic options in case uh, they need to uh, kind of force Israel to do something uh, something differently. All right, just to remind you, uh, what I do is funded from listeners uh, like you, and um, uh, you know, you guys, you guys make this show possible. We have 340 people watching right now live. Uh, it would be great if we got more likes. Likes really help the algorithm. They really help uh, attract more people. Also, if you want to share the show, that'd be great. I'm going to be on here for at least another 20 minutes to see what happens with that first strike. Probably longer than that, and. Uh, any support you guys can provide uh, financially would be greatly appreciated for the continuation of the show and for the continuation of shows like this would be greatly appreciated. So please consider that. You can use a sticker. You can ask a question. I'm answering questions, anything to do with this war. I'm happy, happy, happy is the wrong term, but I'm, uh, I'm available to answer any of those, uh, any of those, uh, uh, any of those questions. So please, uh, Feel free to, uh, uh, to ask away. Uh, so far, I'd say the, the, the information I've been receiving has been accurate, except for the timing of the drone attack, although, which I expected uh, a, a while ago, about 15, 20 minutes ago. But, I, but it could be that that first wave of drones has already been uh, uh, knocked out of the air by the Israeli Air Force, so uh, they never reached their target. That's why we're not hearing about them. But uh, I, I, think, uh, I think this becomes... I mean, if we don't hear anything hitting the ground in a half an hour, then yes, the, the, the Israelis have knocked down the first, uh, the first uh, round of this, and let's hope that is indeed the case. Um, yeah, it, basically these are the same drones that are being used in Ukraine that Russia is using. These are, U these are uh, Iranian drones that they have sold to Russia, but also that they have uh, built uh, production facilities in Russia to produce these drones. So uh, uh, Russia is using these drones against uh, you know, Ukrainian civilians. Um, uh, all right, let's see. There's somebody on the ground in Israel uh, in terms of civilians. All right. Uh, all right, as, as it turns out, right now, as we talk, uh, Russia is using Iranian suicide drones to attack Kharkiv, the city in the, uh, in the east of, uh, of Ukraine. So Russia is attacking Ukraine as Iran is attacking, uh, uh, attacking Israel. Uh, we're seeing traffic jams in Tehran. 
as people are rushing to buy gasoline ahead of an expected escalation in the conflict with Israel over the coming days. So good. I'm glad to see that the Iranians are also scared uh, and panicking. And uh, it's long past due that the Iranians do something, that the Iranian people do something about this horrific regime uh, that they have uh, uh, in Iran. It would be unbelievable if this, if this was... Um, if this was what led to ultimately the fall of the Iranian regime. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. All right, we've got celebrations of Hezbollah supporters in the streets of Beirut, uh, maybe a little prematurely, uh, and maybe the fact that they're going out, in the, although maybe the fact that they're going out into the streets of Beirut Maybe that suggests that Hezbollah will not attack Israel tonight, um, given that this is a pretty easy target if they're all celebrating. Uh, Palestinians are celebrating. Uh, let me see if there's any indication on where the Palestinians are celebrating. Uh, yeah, not sure about that. We'll check that in a minute. Uh, Andrew says, is there a connection between Christianity and a lack of self-esteem that leads to an impairment to the willingness to self-defense? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, Christianity is an ideology, a religion that basically bars self-esteem. It, uh, it basically says, I mean, Christianity, at least if you follow Augustine and you follow Luther and Calvin, Basically, Christianity says you're sinful. You're sinful. Every single human being is sinful. Sinful for the very act of being conceived. For the very fact of being born. You are a sinner. And indeed, you're predetermined to go to hell or heaven. Uh, that's also predetermined. So how can you have self-esteem when you are a sinner? And where you might go to hell and you don't even know. When... Um, when the whole religion is about humility, humility not in the sense of, look, I don't know everything and I can make mistakes. No, humility in the sense that I am worthless. I am nothing as compared to God's glory, whatever. Nonsense, that is, right? All right, according to the Israeli, um, according to the Israeli military, Iran has now shot ballistic missiles towards Israel. All right, so that is... That would make sense, right? So if they shoot it now, then the ballistic missiles, the cruise missiles, and the drones will arrive at about the same time. Uh, so uh, you've got you've got um, you've got a three-prong uh, attack targeted at hitting Israel all at about the same time, so that Israeli defense, Israeli air defense systems are uh, tested to the max. Also, we're hearing that there are air raid, shell, air raid silence, sirens going off in southern Israel right now. So air raid shel uh, sirens, Israelis hustling towards the um, air raid shelters. They might have them in their home. They might be, uh, they might be others in, uh, in the Negev, in the southern uh, south of Israel. So it, it is happening real time right now. Um, Okay, I, I don't know what it says. It's already over. I don't know what that means. All right. Um, all right. Iran is saying uh, to the UN that their mission is that the military action against Israel is concluded, and it warns the United States to stay out. Sirens in the south. Yes. Um, all right. So, so it's done in the sense that. Uh, this is it. So they want to say this was limited. Uh, Hezbollah didn't participate. Don't don't penalize us too much. This was just retaliation for you bombing the embassy. Israel, don't retaliate. That's the message coming out of Iran. Um, hopefully, Israel retaliates massively. Massively. I mean, it's the only thing will keep Israel safe in the long uh, in the in the long run. Okay, hundreds of image sirens going off in Israel right now, uh, all over the Beersheba, which is the major city in the south, 
um, and in, uh, in the West Bank as well, so in the Shomron as well. Uh, not yet in um, not yet in the Tel Aviv area. All right, so we've got here. We we see a map. You've got red alerts in the northern Negev around Beer Sheva, which is the major city in the south of Israel, and uh, not far from Petah Tikva, a little bit a uh, little bit uh, east of Tel Aviv. Not that far from Tel Aviv, a little bit east of Tel Aviv in the west West Bank area. You've got um, sirens uh, going off. Um, uh, what is this? All right, and then um, uh, okay. So my my guess is that these are the remaining drones that the Israelis uh, didn't uh, shoot out of sky. Maybe second wave or third wave drones, uh, or maybe these are already the cruise missiles that are that are approaching. There's also video now from Tehran of the launch of a ballistic missile. So we've also got ballistic missiles heading towards Israel right now that will take them 15 minutes. So by uh, top of the hour, 2 a.m. Israel time, um, ballistic missiles should be entering the picture and then we will see how the Israeli defense, um, how the Israeli defense system um, works against, uh, against those and how many of those it manages to knock down. James uh, G says, do we see Asia becoming more? Oh, well, I don't want to answer that. So, guys, I'm not going to answer non-war-related um, questions uh, until later. So right now, we're focused on, um, uh, on okay, uh, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, um, sirens are going off. Uh, J.J. Jacoby says... He's hearing explosions. My guess is that that is anti, anti-missile anti defense systems. That's not explosions, um, uh, it, nothing hitting the ground, I hope. Uh, Gilad says he's hearing explosions in the center of Israel. That would be in the area of Tel Aviv. Dioa, everything okay? I hope everything's okay. My sister is in the center near Tel Aviv. Um, so sirens going off uh, everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the, these are the drones uh, that have made it. Um, okay. Okay, seeing stuff in Ashkelon, webcam stream, not sure what that would be. Uh, all right. Okay, let's see. Answer that. Let, okay. Uh, so my, my chat feed is more on top of the news than is, uh, than is uh, Twitter right now. So, uh, um, all right. Okay, Israel's under significant attack from Iranian ballistic missiles. So these are ballistic missiles uh, approaching Israel or hitting Israel. So they were ballistic missiles. That's what this source is reporting, that this is not the drones. Uh, Leo says she can hear clear explosions, siren going off in Jerusalem. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see. So yes, uh, Israel is clearly under attack. There are clearly explosions. There are clearly air raid, uh, air raid sirens going off. Um, and Israeli sources have confirmed the launch earlier of Iranian ballistic missiles against Israel. Uh, so this is, this is now the test of the air defense system. The air defense system will be louder, I think, than the Iron Dome because these are, these are significant missiles that are being shot at other missiles. Um, and uh, so it will, be, it will be quite loud, uh, and hopefully the explosions that all of you are hearing are actually uh, the... Um, uh, actually, the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, okay, multiple interceptions reported over northeast Israel. Okay, so that's on the Golan Heights. Not clear if that's the, miss the ballistic missiles or if that's the cruise missiles or if that's a drone. Remember, this is a three-prong attack, cruise, ballistic, and drones, and it's coming from Iran. And as far as we know, the Houthis have also launched. So they are ballistic missiles heading from the Houthis in Yemen. So that will help. That will target a lot. That will target. 
the very, uh, very, very south of Israel. That has not had a red alert yet. It's more Be'er Sheva. That is more likely to be from Iran than from the Houthis. Um, J.J. Jigby says sirens have gone off. I hear explosions. I think it's the air defense system, J.J. Jigby's, but you should be in an air raid shelter. If sirens have gone off, go to the nearest air raid shelter. Don't stay put. Anybody who's got, uh, you know, if, if there's a safe room in the house you're in, or if there's an air raid shelter, go to the air raid shelter. I know a bunch of you are listening that are actually in Israel right now. Your primary concern should be right now is to keep yourself, families, anybody with you safe. Uh, do not, I mean, there's no point not being in an area shelter right now. So Jigby's help, uh, you know, Jigby's help, uh, you know, go over there. Um, explosions were put over the city of Jerusalem in eastern Israel. So over the city. So these are likely to be interceptions of ballistic or cruise missiles. This is, um, this is the, um, uh, the arrow, uh, the arrow systems, uh, the, the arrow uh, and, and Patriot. I mean, the Patriots and the arrows should be able to take care of pretty much anything heading towards Israel. It's just a qu question of quantity at this point. The, the there's no the Iranians do not have a ballistic missile that has the capacity to evade a Patriot, or evade an arrow. It's it really is an issue of have they overwhelmed Israel's capacity to launch a, its air defense system. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, um, I, I think, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that is, uh, I think that is the explosions you're hearing. I don't think the explosions are missiles hitting the ground. I don't think it's explosions hitting the ground. I think it's the air defense system, uh, working right now. Um, let me see if, uh, this other website has some, uh, other stuff. Um, all right, let's see. Ah, uh, Israeli war room. You see, they're not bombing Jerusalem. I, I think these interceptions well above Jerusalem. Here's footage for Jericho. Swarms of Iranian drones are being intercepted by the Israeli defense uh, defenses above Jericho. Jericho is not far for Jerusalem. So you would hear those explosions. Uh, I, I, I doubt that these are targeting Jericho. Jericho is an Arab city. Uh, I doubt that they're actually targeting Jerusalem. They're probably targeting Tel Aviv, and they have to pass through Jerusalem to get there. It's very, very unlikely that Jerusalem was a target. But you never know. You never know, right? I've been wrong before. Um, all right. All right, we're seeing... Uh, more details, let's see. Okay, so we're, we're looking at drones and cruise missiles and maybe, maybe um, uh, what do you call it, uh, ballistic missiles being taken down. Hopefully none of them have hit the ground yet. Let's see if there's any other updates. Um, okay. Live on Western Wall. So they hit the Western Wall. Um, all right. Literally hit the Western Wall, Lior? No, Libella, not Lior, Libella. I've just seen it live on Western Wall. But does that mean they hit the Western Wall? Or that, you know, fragments is because they're intercepting these things. Interceptions by Iron Dome and other elements of Israeli air defense array seen over eastern Israel near the Jordan Valley. Okay, that, that's consistent with the Jericho. Uh, that's consistent with not far from Jerusalem. Um, I don't know what... That's a channel. No, they didn't hit the Western Wall. Okay, it's a, it's a channel. It's live footage uh, from uh, Western Wall. Western Wall is a channel. Um, Okay, um, yeah, this is the price of appeasement, people. This is a price of Israeli appeasement. This is a price of American appeasement. This is a, the price of appeasement that I and others have been warning about 
God, I've been warning about it for 30 years, 30 years. I mean, as long as I've been active, you know, in this kind of stuff, this is, this is the consequence. When you appease evil, this is what happens. When Iraq launched all those missiles towards Israel in 1991 and Israel did not respond, what, what message were they sending you on? What message were they sending others? Uh, when Israel did not take out Hamas in the many, 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 many decades, in the last two, three decades where they could have done it, what message were they sending? When they didn't take out Hezbollah, when all the opportunities, Hezbollah, not Hezbollah, Hezbollah, when they've had all the opportunities to do it and all the reasons to do it, and they didn't do it, this is the, this, this is the, me what message did they send? A message of weakness. Weakness only emboldens evil over and over and over again. This is the reality. Israel is in the Middle East. It's not in some European country, although even in Europe, look at all the appeasement of Putin led to his invasion of Ukraine. See, even in Europe, you can get war. Weakness generates war. All right, explosions now heard over the city of Haifa in northwest Israel. So, um, some of those drones were targeting uh, Haifa. We, we heard that earlier. Uh, and uh, again, it's over the city. As long as it's over, whenever they say over, that is, uh, that is good. So according to uh, Israeli sources, no casualties so far. So, so far, if the drones have hit, they've hit unpopulated areas. And um, most of these missiles, drones, uh, and uh, have, uh, have been shot down, but I, I am worried about the fact that they are above Haifa, um, that they're hearing explosions above Haifa. Um, all right. Uh, okay, uh, cruise missiles and medium-range ballistic missiles have reportedly passed over northern Iraq city of Ibril, heading towards Israel. So it's not over yet. They're still, they're still launching towards Israel. They're gonna test. They're going to test the Israeli air defense system. This is going to be the test, if ever there was one. Timmy, uh, thank you. First super chat ever. Really appreciate that. David Arsenault, thank you. Um, uh, and uh, thank you, guys. Let's see. What do we have here? Um, Andrew says Christianity is inherent anti-self-defense. That's absolutely true. Brian Prince, thanks, you, Ron. Thank, thank you, Brian. James G., why did Scotland become so woke? I'll do that another time. Frank, um, how can Israel destroy Iranian leadership forever? Well, it, I don't think the Iranian people want this leadership. I don't think the Iranian people want to be ruled by mullahs who don't allow women to show a strand of hair. I think what Israel needs to do is incapacitate the Israeli, uh, the, the, sorry, the Iranian uh, uh, Revolutionary Guard. And by doing that, we can the Iranian regime to the extent that the Iranians rise up, rise up and, and replace it. Um, so I think that's it. Ali says, Yohan, do you do one-on-one -on -one chat for 15, 30 minutes? Yes, it's $500 for 30 minutes. So uh, $500 for 30 minutes for one-on-one. Yohan -on -one. Uh, at yohanbookshow.com. Let me know if you're interested. Um, so you destroy the leadership by replacing it, and you replace it by weakening it so much that, uh, that their own citizens replace them, replace them. Apollo Zeus says, stay strong. Thank you, Apollo. Not me. It's my sister who has to stay strong, um, and, and my parents and my brother and my other sister. They're the ones who have to stay strong. Uh, I am in the uh, absolute safety of, uh, of Puerto Rico. James G. says, how does this attack on Israel impact Jewish people in Western countries in the near future and over the next five years? I mean, I don't know that it has an impact. I mean, we've seen anti-Semitism increase in the Western world, both from the left and from the right. I don't expect that to go away. I, I will say this. I think the only thing that will cause anti-Semitism to dissipate, the only thing that can keep Jewish people safe all over the world is Israeli strength. That is the only thing that can help is, uh, a, you know, a massive Israeli retaliation, making it clear what happens, making it clear what happens when you attack Israel. You destroy the enemy. People, they might hate Jews still, but they, 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 
They won't go after you if you're strong. If you're strong, they will hate you but respect you from afar. So what Israel has to do, what it had to do in Gaza, and it's only partially done, is be strong, not apologize, crush the enemy, and blame all deaths, all destruction on the people who initiated the violence. This video, uh, video I'm seeing that shows um, the interception of, uh, of a lot of this, but also inter uh, shows uh, something striking the ground. Hard to tell if that's real or not. This is from Jordan. Uh, the sky over Jordan, um, uh, it looks like uh, somebody is intercepting uh, these drones uh, above the Jordan. It looks, it, it looks like a, you know, aerial combat over the city of Amman. There's video. Uh, it could be the Israeli Air Force, could be the American Air Force, could be the Jordanians. The Jordanians said they would shoot down anything that passed. J.J. Um, uh, asked how long would all this last? Well, um, it could last for a few more hours uh, in Israel. Uh, and then if Israel retaliates, and then you could see the Iranians retaliate. It could last for a few days, um, it, depending on how devastating the Israeli retaliation is and how quick it is, how quick it is. Um, you know, so if, if, the, if, the, if the Iranians have just launched uh, another set of cruise missiles, then that's another couple of hours. So, yeah, I, I, w I would expect this to last through the night. I, I, Israelis are not going to get any sleep tonight. That is, uh, that is for sure. Um, all right, Brian, uh, Brian Prince asks, I'm pleasantly surprised but confused that more politicians haven't condemned Israel for the attack in Syria. Uh, I am also pleasantly surprised uh, that they haven't. Uh, um, I think they've been distracted by what's going on in Iran. And look... I think most American, even most American politicians, realize that Iran is the real threat here and that the attack in Syria was necessary and legitimate. Uh, unconfirmed reports of a drone attack on In al Sad air base in Anbar. I have no idea. Uh, you know, could Israel be attacking? Uh, Iran right now, Anbar, is Anbar in Iran? Um, yes, I mean, again, Israel, uh, no, that's in Iraq. So, okay, so that, that would mean that, um, that that's the American base in Anbar. Okay, so that means that somebody is attacking, probably the Iranian affiliated, uh, affiliated groups are attacking the American A base in Anbar. Um, this is, again, American weakness generates um, attacks on Americans. Um, all right, multiple impacts are being reported within the Negev desert in southern Israel. The question is, are these impacts that are being allowed to happen because uh, they're in the desert and they won't hit anybody, or are these impacts because they overcame the air defense system, or are these just the air defense system shooting down uh, the bad stuff? Um, let's see. Several successful interceptions above Jerusalem. That's that. All right. JJ Jigbees is visiting uh, Israel this week, and he happens to be in Jerusalem right now. And not easy, not easy to be caught up in this. I mean, Israelis have some familiarity with what's going on, but to be an American in Israel right now, uh, not Israel, not easy or, or pleasant, but you get a, a little bit of a sense of what Israel goes through. Uh, initial reports of an attack on U.S. forces at Ebril International Airport in northern Iraq, as well as at Al Saad Air Force Air Base in western Iraq. All right. Well, now now America is definitely part of this, so America is definitely uh, involved um, and and going on. E Eli says that the negative attack is nothing. So um, uh, good, to, good to hear. I, I'm not surprised, but good to hear. Uh, is Jordan allied friendly with Israel? It's got a peace deal with Israel. It's not particularly friendly, but it, it, Jordan does not want to be part of this. So it is likely to be shooting down whatever it can over Jordan. It not, does not want to be uh, uh, you know, part of a conflict between Israel and Iran. 
it, it, it is no vested interest in Iran succeeding in a conflict uh, such as this. Um, all right, James G says, what is stopping Israel from taking action on legitimate Iranian targets across the Middle East? I still do not understand how this is happening. Nothing, nothing is stopping Israel. Israel is stopping Israel. The very fact that Israel, um, uh, you know, has been weak and, and uh, non-aggressive, uh, and uh, that is, but, but right now, Israel could be and should be targeting massive uh, uh, targets uh, in Iran and Iranian targets all over the Middle East. Of course, you could say that this started when Israel took out an Iranian target in, at the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Of course, that is a consequence of lots of iterations of violence. Um, last few minutes, red alerts across the country, which means sirens and, and uh, potential launches. Uh, whoops, what happened? Uh, no reports have been received of casualties apart from cause of stress symptoms and injuries occurring, occurred while running um, uh, to protected areas. Uh, so people spaining their ankles while running and, and people being just emotionally distressed, completely understandable and legitimate, but no casualties from any kind of hits from the air. As I said, it, it, you know, uh, Israel has a very, very robust a defense system. Uh, it, it may be the best in the world, given that it has Patriots, which is the best uh, defense system in the world for certain types of missiles. It has the Arrow, it has Iron Dome, it has others. Uh, it is putting all of that to the test right now. And so far, so good. We will see, I'd say over the next hour, we'll know, uh, we'll know a lot more uh, about, uh, about what is what is being hit or not hit, what is happening or not happening. All right, let me get a little bit of water here. All right, um, interceptions seen over the Jordan capital of Amman. Talked about that earlier. Nothing new there. Let's see. Uh, let's try this. That's such a silly headline, the Iranians are bombing Jerusalem. It's not clear that they were bombing Jerusalem. They were missiles shot over Jerusalem, but I'm not sure the target was Jerusalem. Maybe it was. Um, as of this moment, no reported impacts in Israel. The Iranian aggression is failing. Well, of course it's failing. It's Iran. It's Iran. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be impacts. That is a missile hitting. Uh, it, it just means that it's not overly surprising that there have been none. Um, Okay, BBC has live video on Tel Aviv. Um, who do you trust more, me or the BBC? Who cares what the BBC has? Now, if they have Douglas Murray in Tel Aviv, that would be of value. Uh, all right, this is just uh, uh, Senator Cortez Maestro uh, stands firmly with Israel. Steve Scalia, um, the House moved through its previously announced legislative schedule next week to instead consider legislation that supports our, Israel, our ally Israel um, and holds Iran and its terrorist proxies accountable. The House of Representatives stands strongly with Israel, and there must be consequences for this unprovoked attack. More details on the legislative items to be considered will be forthcoming. Uh, Steve Scalia is part of the leadership, uh, the Republican leadership in the, um, uh, in the House. All right, Leo says, one 10-year-old uh, badly hurt. Um, I'm yeah, that's 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 horrible. It would be interesting, you know, hurt from what? But let's see. Breaking, uh, President Biden. All right, we saw that, but he hasn't he hasn't uh, spoken yet. He's about to address at some point. We're still awaiting President Biden's address to the nation uh, about the situation. Everybody's awaiting it. Should happen any minute now. Um, let's see. Um, All right, it looks like Ilan Juno is live right now. We're talking about this as well on the Ayn Rand Institute uh, YouTube channel, so you can check him out as well. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, ballistic missiles should have hit Israel by now. So the only thing, the only thing one could estimate is that uh, they were shot down. If it's true that ballistic missiles were shot, then, um, 
those ballistic missiles were shot down uh, by, by Israel because they would have hit by now. Um, all right. Uh, why is my feed not showing live on Twitter? That's weird. I'll start that up again. All right, let's see. What did I see here? Leo said that the 10-year-old boy that was badly hurt is in the south, in the Negev. He is a Bedouin. So, yeah, so my guess is that uh, the Bedouin often live in, uh, you know, unpopulated areas, they, you know, in, in, in uh, little villages or just in tents, uh, although that is more history than present. But in little, uh, you know, in little, uh, so it might be that this is kind of a, one of those missiles that Israel let by um, because they expected it to land in an unpopulated area and, the you know, the Bedouin would happen to be there and this kid got hurt. It just shows you a Bedouin means it's a Muslim, uh, an Arab. Uh, it just shows you the casualties and the, the destruction. It, it, you know, this is not, it's all the residents of Israel, the citizens of Israel, including Muslims, are the victims of what the Iranians, uh, what the Iranians are doing. Why is my live on X not showing up? Did, did, did they cut me off? Um, I, I don't know. Anyway, you guys should uh, go to X, Twitter, and, um, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, share. Share the YouTube. Share the uh, Twitter. Uh, let's get more people watching, uh, as, as many people as we can watching this. Um, all right. Uh, uh, British RAF jets have reportedly shot down Iranian drones bound for Israel. Good for the RAF. Israel's Channel 12 said U.S. and U.K. fighter jets shot down Iranian drones near the Syria-Iraq border. Don't know where, they, where they're flying from, but that is uh, fantastic. Uh, that's fantastic news. God, my feed on Twitter is filled with the garbage. All right. Um, uh, yeah, please share the fact that I'm doing this show on Twitter right now. Now is a great time to do a share. Uh, it, it is, uh, you know, people are interested. People might come. They discover. Oh, by the way, we've got 350 people watching right now. If you're not a subscriber, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. No, I'm on, I'm on Twitter. 1,507 views so far on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, uh, it is on live on Twitter right now. You can share that one as well. Please share. Please comment underneath it. You know, all these social media, they love interaction. So um, uh, so do it, right? Uh, uh, share it. Uh, like it. Yeah, 281 likes on this YouTube feed. There should be a lot more than that. It should be double. Please consider sharing, uh, liking it before you leave. Mark Goodwin, thank you. Thank you for both stickers. Really, really appreciate that. Um, don't forget, you guys can ask questions uh, on the war. Don't ask another stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll answer anything else you ask either later today, probably not. I'll just keep them for tomorrow or some other time uh, to answer. But uh, uh, let's try to stick with covering uh, the war. It's interesting that before, before, like on the right side of Twitter, live on X, it had me, and now that's gone. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still streaming on Twitter. And please, please share that, repost it, comment on it, engage with it, but uh, it's not showing me the stats in the same way it did before, so that's too bad. But anyway, 1,532 views on Twitter. Um, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. I want to go there. Let's see if there's anything news on these feeds. Ah, all right. Yeah, you have to keep refreshing to get the likes. I don't know why the likes don't uh, refresh automatically. Uh, let's see what's going on. So says, if you're curious about Haifa, I saw two interception flares above the Kayot. Kayot is, before you get to the, to the mountain hill that Haifa's on, it's a flat area. It's where a lot of Israeli industry is. So that was uh, uh, two flares. And heard a singular boom, no sirens. No sirens is good. Thank you, Sal, for letting me know. That is a relief. Um, that is a relief that, uh, that Haifa is not under sirens and not under direct attack. Um, 
All right. Uh, as I said, you can keep asking questions. Okay, Lady Lewin just did, uh, or I missed it, it was earlier. How thin is Israel spread across multiple fronts now? I mean, it's spread thin, there's no question. Uh, I, I, you know, I think it has the resources, the ammunition, as long as America is willing to resupply it, uh, that it needs, it can do it. Again, I, I've said this all night, um, all afternoon for me, uh, the real issue is what does Hezbollah do? The real issue is what happens on the Northern Front. If Israel has to invade Lebanon, if Israel has to go in there, I mean, I said Israel should have done that the, uh, in October, right? Because I, I, I think they should have preempted. They shouldn't have waited. But if they have to go in now with their troops committed in Gaza and trying to fend this off, that is a challenge. It's a challenge Israel can do. It's a challenge Israel can live up to, but it is a challenge. There's no question. And again, if, is, if Hezbollah launches, is, if Hezbollah launches, um, uh, then Israel's a defense system is really, is really a challenge at that point. So uh, Israel spread thin, but it's doable, right? It's doable. It does not face any kind of invading army. Uh, Egypt is not going to drive tanks across the border. Jordan is not going to drive tanks across the border. Syria or uh, 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 Lebanon are not going to do that. The main threat Israel faces right now is uh, Iranian, uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, Hezbollah missiles coming across the northern border. That is the real risk. And maybe Hezbollah fighters storming the gates. All right, now it, it, it gets on Twitter. A 10-year-old boy in southern Israel is a serious condition and being treated by the Magen David Adom, that's the ambulance service in Israel, after being injured from an Iranian strike on the town of Bedouim near Arad. Arad is, again, a town in the Negev in the south of Israel, um, and, and the Bedouim live around in that area. Um, tragic. I, ho I, hope, I hope the kid is okay. Regional officials have told Reuters that aircraft of the Royal Jordanian Air Force have downed over a dozen of Iranian one-way suicide drones over northern and central Jordan. That is great, great news to hear that the Jordanian Air Force is actually participating in this and taking them down. I mean, ultimately, if you count the Jordanian Air Force, the American Air Force, the, 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 the British Air Force, the French Air Force, and the Israeli Air Force, it's very little is going to get through. Very little is going to get through. I don't know why this was allowed to get through. Maybe because they thought it would drop in an uninhabited area. Uh, that is sad for the 10-year-old and, and his family. Um, all right. Uh, somebody said from, I'm not sure where in Israel, heard noises overhead that I've not heard before, and we are used to many types of jet and boom noises. Now gone quiet. Uh, never thought I would see the day that Iran would actually attack Israel. A new chapter is now open. Now the question is, can we close it quickly? Can we close it quickly? All right. Uh, I see Israelis all over Twitter and social media thanking the Jordanians, thanking the Americans, thanking the Brits. Uh, it'd be nice if we could see some, uh, some uh, uh, French participation. That would be really nice. Um, all right, images appearing to show medium-range ballistic missiles launches in Iran near the city of Tabriz in northwestern Iran. Uh, reports of sirens activated in Ibril in Iraqi Kurdistan. That's interesting that they would, uh, who would launch against Kurdistan? Don't know. Don't know. Maybe, again, uh, some of these um, uh, Iranian-linked militias, but I don't think they want to start a front with the Kurds. I, I, I really don't think they want to start a front with the Kurds, but who knows. Uh, Sternheim, Yaron, thank you for your shows. What else can we do other than supporting you and ARI? Well, you can support any voice out there that's pro-reason, pro-Israel, uh, you know, not in a kind of obsessive religious sense, but in the sense of defending Western civilization. Uh, you can speak up. The most important thing you can do is speak up. It's, it's sheer material. And, and you just take a stand. It's so valuable to just take a stand, plant a, plant a flag in it, you know, just let the world know where you stand on this issue and, and, and how you stand. Those are the things you can do is, 
uh, obviously support financially the institute, me, but but more importantly, the moral support and just to know that people are standing on the right side of history. Iyal, Iran is going to do what? Well, they've already done what they've done, uh, and, and they'll continue to do it. More than this, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I keep repeating this, but it's really, really, really important to internalize. It is so important that Israel finish this job before Iran gets nuclear weapons. Imagine this tonight with a nuclear Iran. Unimaginable. So Israel has to finish it now. Finish it means completely and thoroughly, I think this is how might Israel retaliate, maybe this answers this question, completely and thoroughly destroy any remnant of Iranian nuclear capabilities. Thoroughly destroy the industrial, military industrial capabilities of the Iranians. Destroy the drone factories, the ballistic missile factories, destroy the warehouses in which they keep this. Israel has fantastic intelligence, fantastic intelligence on Iran. Do it, do it fast, do it devastating, quick and devastating. Don't putz around, don't play games, don't consult with Biden, don't wait for Biden to fly over, don't just launch and devastate. I don't know if they've learned anything. I doubt they've learned anything. God, I'm so frustrated. Because, I mean, everything that's happening, October 7th and this, it's just, it's everything I've told you would happen. And it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just frustrating that you have to, that, that nobody learns from history. That's the real frustration. All right, I'm going to take another two-minute break. We've been going, God, four hours and 20 minutes. I think that's right. You know, four hours and 20 minutes. Uh, there's now, they're now showing parts of a fuselage of an Iranian missile. This is not a drone, guys. This is a, God, that is a, that is a real, that's a big missile. Uh, that's either a cruise missile or a ballistic missile that uh, has been intercepted. It, it's in Jordan, somewhere in Jordan, in the street, a, a massive piece of metal. Um, all right, Iranian ballistic missiles seen flying over Iraqi capital of Baghdad towards Israel a few minutes ago. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, they are being shot out of the sky. The fact that nothing's really hit Israel in significant ways, I mean, what a testament to Israeli technology, to Western technology, but mainly Israeli technology. Um, uh, so far, so good. No real damage. I'll be back in like two minutes. Right back. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to be eating a little bit while we're doing this. Super hungry. Um, Frank says Iranian self-sabotage. Absolutely. I mean, Israel has everything it needs now. No excuses. I think it will have the world's support. It has American support. Get the job done. Do the job the Americans should have done 20 years ago. Do it now. Florida, Nick says, it wasn't two minutes. How long was it? Anyway, sorry, I'm eating a Powerball. Well, I didn't want to make you wait for two minutes. You know, two minutes of dead time is bad television or bad YouTube or bad podcasting or whatever. Jerusalem was not hit. Everything, everything sent towards Jerusalem was knocked out of the sky. Uh, so Israel generally 
um, has not really uh, been hit badly. Burning calories and also consuming them. So uh, I will eat and talk and see if I'm capable of doing that. Um, oops. All right. Again, fee feel free to ask questions. That helps to keep the show going. I'm trying to get a new news so I can uh, update you on the news. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing much right now. I have to say, um, but uh, we will see. Israeli officials have confirmed to uh, Channel 12 that there will be significant retaliation against Iran. I mean, what does significant mean? The only acceptable retaliation, the minimal acceptable retaliation, minimal acceptable retaliation, that's a new term. I think we should, we should coin that, minimal acceptable retaliation, M-A-R, M-A-R. The, the, the MAR has to be taking out the nuclear facilities. This is the, the most important target in Iran. The only really important target in Iran. They have to, and, and the Americans should do this because the Americans have the bunker best of bombs. They have the bo bombs that can do that. If you don't want to do it in America, please ship some bunk bunker busting bombs to Israel now, today. I don't know if Israel has a tool to deliver. I think they can. Um, but that's it. You got to, anything, anything that has to do with nuclear has to be demolished, including that nuclear power plant that they're building, that the Russians are building for the Iranians. Crush it, destroy it, level it, just like they did with the Iranian nuclear power plant. And then all those facilities where they've got the centrifuges are deep into the mountain. Get those bunker busted bombs, level that mountain, use whatever kind of ballistic missile you need to use in order to just demolish the place. Um, Elias says, you hit it on the head with that, Iran. All Israeli TV interpreters and formers of the IDF are saying exactly that. This is a golden opportunity for the uh, IDF to rid of the nuclear plant. The plant is not the problem. It's the facilities. It's where they've got the centrifuges. It's where they've actually got the uranium, the, 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 the uranium that's almost nuclear grade. Take it out, all of it, now. Every single facility, don't... The worst thing they can do is a half-assed job. The worst thing they can do is take out some of the stuff and not do it all. You've got to crush the entire infrastructure. Anything that has to do with uh, Iranians' nuclear capabilities has to be demolished. Demolished. So, I mean, just imagine again. You know, uh, Richard said, we have a process in place. We pay them billions. They slow down development works. No, it doesn't work. That was what we did with North Korea. Exactly the same thing we did with North Korea. And then one day we woke up and they said, whoops, we have a bomb. Imagine if Iran does that. And again, imagine what tonight would be like. Uh, let's see. Um... Yeah, it looks like a, that the debris in Jordan looks like a ballistic missile. It doesn't look like a cruise missile. It's really big. Yeah, it's going to be interesting if the Spanish prime minister condemns the Iranian attack. That'll be interesting. He's been pro Hamas the entire time. Will he also be pro uh, Iran? Okay. Additional British fighters leaving the UK for the Eastern Mediterranean. Wow. So we've got a bunch of British fighters. I wonder where they land, where they take off of. Um, off of. Uh, I mean, Turkey has a NATO base. You think, they, you think they're flying out of Turkey? <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty funny if, um, if um, they're flying out of a Turkish Air Force base. Almost as funny as the fact that the Americans are probably fighting, flying out of a Qatari Air Force Base, right? Um, that's a good point. Jordan, the Brits 
the Brits could be flying out of Jordan, and they also have a, uh, they have a base in Cyprus. Huh, okay. So they're flying to Cyprus and then off, out of Cyprus, and maybe Jordan. Jordan, of course, has a long history uh, with the Brits. The Brits uh, it was part of uh, original Palestine, part of the original mandate was Jordan. ASA, thank you for the first super chat, first super chat ever. Thank you, really appreciate it. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber to the Iran Book Show, please subscribe. Um, please subscribe now. All right. Um, let's see. Andrew, do you consider the American right as pro-Israel? I interpreted Trump's statement about Israel doing whatever it can to end the war as pragmatic political expediency rather than being morally correct. Yeah, I mean, there's a sentence he won't. I mean, there is no morally, morally anything with Trump. Everything is expedience. Morality doesn't apply to anything he stands for, anything he says, anything he believes in. Now, is the American right pro-Israel? Well, it depends. Candace Owen is a part of the American right. She's clearly anti-Israel. She hates Israel. Tucker Carlson is part of the American right. He's clearly anti-Israel. So those two representatives of the American right are anti-Israel. And if you go and if you look at Twitter, and you look at, at, at some of the streams about Israel, you will find a lot of right-wingers, a lot of right-wingers, who are unbelievably anti-Israel. While wow, there's video of uh, the Iron Dome intercepting, um, intercepting, uh, Iron Dome I don't think would intercept a cruise missile, but these are drones, and there's just, I don't know, 20-something lights in the air, and. It's pretty dramatic footage. This is above uh, Mount Hevron, so that's in the south of the West Bank. Um, and then you're seeing uh, another, another video of Iranian missiles seen in the sky over the Knesset building. You see the Knesset building, and the Knesset is the Israeli parliament, and the missile above, and it looks like it is, um, it is uh, that was intercepted. Um, yeah, I mean, there's pretty dramatic footage out there. I'm sure if you're watching Israeli television, they've got even more dramatic footage than what I'm seeing here. All right, let's see. Uh, Florida Nick says, I remember when we used to joke about getting a three-hour show. Now we have a four-hour-plus show. No, we're, we're very close. Four and a half hours. We're, we're making it a five. Um, we will, we will see. I mean, unless, unless this really this stops being, um, being news, which is possible, that this is over. But I don't think so. Anybody in Israel over there? Sirens in Jerusalem again. Okay, so sh the object's being shot down from the sky. So we still got sirens in Jerusalem, so it's not over. Um, all right. Let's see. Yeah, channel 14 on YouTube is the most informative stream. Is that the religious channel, 14? Um, let's see. So um, I don't believe the American right is, is, I think the American right, a large extent the American right is anti is anti Israel. Um, uh, large segments. Other segments are very pro Israel. So most Republicans in Congress are very pro Israel. The evangelicals are generally very pro Israel for the wrong reasons, but they're pro Israel. Okay, Jigby's JJ Jigby says he doesn't hear sirens. Li Libella did hear sirens, so I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it's a time issue. I'm making Labella hungry. Um, sorry, but it's like, it's 7.30 here, and I haven't din eaten dinner. I, I was expecting to eat dinner at 
and that hasn't happened. I, we saw this one minute ago. Israeli officials have stated there will be a significant response against Iran. You know the problem with making such statements? There's going to be a significant response against Iran. You better live up to it. I remember shock and awe, and then it wasn't shock and awe. So you come across as weak. You come across as weak. Um, who is pro-American? The center-left is pro... Is, who is pro-American? Not the new right. They're not pro-American. They don't know what America is. You can't be pro-American if you don't know what American is. And that's true of Trump, and that's true of the entire new right. They're not pro-American because they, they have no clue what it is. Uh, 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 what's his name? Tucker Carlson, in my view, is anti-American. Anti-American, not pro-American. And so is, uh, what's her name? So, yeah, what's relevant is who's pro-American. I agree. But the new right is not pro-American. <coughs> the new right is, is, is pro some um, nationalistic, un-American conception of America. Well, new Catholic, the Catholics, Catholics, you know, are the intellectual do dominating the new right, but there's still a new right. I mean, Tucker's not a Catholic, as far as I can tell. Matt Walsh. Okay, I don't know what Matt Walsh has to do with this. Okay, that was Andrew. Florida Nick says, oh yeah, I already answered that one. Uh, France Folk says, what about the European right? Will Europe support Israel now? I think the European right is probably more pro-Israel because they are directly facing an Islamic threat. But remember that the European right is going to flip on a, on a dime uh, in terms of anti-Semitism. Right? So the European right can be very anti-Semitic. We know that from history. But right now, it's also very anti-Muslim. And right now, I think the anti-Muslim trumps the anti-Semitism. The American right, it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no, the threat doesn't really exist to the American right, to America, from, from Islam, the way it does in Europe. And in Europe, people are confronted by it on a daily basis, right? I mean, Muslims are everywhere, or in a lot of places, and people are afraid of them, so they, they, they see it everywhere. So it's much more likely to be um, European right pro-Israel and anti-Muslim. The American right, some pro-Israel, but clearly a significant number of, uh, of the American right is uh, anti-Israel. And look, the American people are anti-Israel. A majority of Americans, majority of Americans think Israel's gone too far in Hamas, in, uh, versus Hamas in Gaza. Too far. They haven't gone far enough. All right. We just saw impact. Um, footage showing one of the impacts of an Iranian medium-range ballistic missile earlier in the Negev Desert. This could be where this kid was hurt. It's a big impact. Big source of light. But it is in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing there. So... We're going to see a lot of these videos. You're going to see a lot of videos of missiles uh, being intercepted in the air and, and, and striking in different places. But so far, it seems that we've got most of the strikes, almost all the strikes are uh, with no casualties, except for the 10-year-old boy who was hurt in the, uh, a, a Druze, not a Druze, a Bedouin boy was hurt in, in the Negev. Martin, thank you, Martin. Um, Martin has given a whole series of uh, Argentinian, I think it's Argentinian, right? Argentinian pesos. Unfortunately, the Argentinian pesos were so little, uh, but really appreciate it, Martin. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Uh, Apollo Zeus, thank you. Thank you for all of you, you guys, for the support. Really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, all right, I think. Are we getting close? So we're going to give it a few more minutes. 
see if there's um, if there's more news. I mean, Ibril Airport. Um, yeah, clearly, uh, U.S. bases in Iraq have been uh, hit hard. Uh, so uh, that is going to be it's going to be interesting whether the U.S. responds. Right? It hasn't really responded uh, badly, um, but uh, the U.S. responded. Yeah, uh, I see photos online. There was a photo online earlier today of a Muslim father with his kid. His kid is dressed up like a Hamas fighter, Hamas terrorist, with a uh, with a with a automatic machine gun around his neck. I mean, I, it's not a real one, but a, a, a toy machine gun. This is what the this is what you strive to be in this community. You strive to be a, a, a suicide bomber. You strive to be a raper and a murderer. Of, uh, uh, of of Jews. I mean, that is that is the ideal. That's what you want your your your, your children to grow up into. You want to you want them to grow up to be to be terrorists. I mean, it, 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 terrorists is even the worst kind of terrorists. Yeah. And now in Toronto, there's a picture of a of a little kid with a kafia all of his you know all of his head in in military military uniform. Uh, drumming, marching to a drum. Um, right. Yeah, um, Valdrin says, I feel like it's a bluff from Iran. It might have to do more with the Iranian regime wanting to squash protests of their own people against a theocratic regime. Iran cannot win the war against Israel, nor is it ready to escalate. That was pretty bad. I mean, Israel just has an incredible air defense system and knocked it all down. But um, I know the Iranians cannot win. But that, but they, you know, they are suicidal and crazy. I do agree with you. It served significant internal domestic purposes for them. This is this is primarily an attack that serves domestic purposes. I said that earlier. Um, the, the, you know, it's it's to show that they're strong in their command. And it happened the same day that they sent out the morality police uh, to go track down women who might be showing a strand of hair. So they are committed to their barbaric ways, and this is just one more way in which they're showing that. Uh, the, the results are pathetic in terms of any impact they've had on Israel, but they can say we did something. They can pretend that they've scared. Now, what happens when Israel retaliates? Where do they go from there? I do not know. And this is why Israel needs to retaliate in the harshest, most overwhelming way. Really crush him. Okay, Franz, um, what about the... Oh, we, we did that, European right. Um, Andrew, did Iran want this attack to be successful? Well, what does it mean to be successful? Kill people? Yeah, I, I'm sure it did. If it could destroy Israel tomorrow, it would. It just can't, and it knows it can't. So, yes, I thought it wanted, yes, it's just, look, it sent hundreds of drones, as far as we know, numerous ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. Uh, Israel, the United States, and the UK have just done, a, and, and Jordan, Jordanian Air Force have done a brilliant job shooting them all down. Shooting them all down. That, that's pretty amazing. You know, this is why I've always said in a direct confrontation between a Western military and the military of any Arab country or the military of Russia, and probably even the military of China, the West just crushes them, crushes them. Technologically, motivationally, it's just no contest. Raphael. People oppose Israel regardless of facts because they are subjectivist. Opinions are created by the anti-life feelings not connected with reality. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that pretty much captures it. Thank you, Rafael. Christian, will Israel do the necessary to end the, the Iranian threat? I doubt it. I mean, but I always doubt it, right? I, you know, I doubt it that they'll do what's necessary. Um, they'll do something. Whether they do what I suggested as a minimum, I mean, what I suggested was just a minimum. I think it should be a lot more than that. Um, the minimum is take out their nuclear capabilities, uh, their nuclear program completely. 
But they should do more than that. They should take out the entire military industrial complex that they have. They should take out their, their ability to produce drones, to produce missiles. They should take out as many of their launches as they can. They should take out, they should target uh, Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard uh, um, uh, bases. They should kill as many of their soldiers. They should weaken the, Israeli, the, the Iranian military. And if, if possible, if they could, and if they're willing to do it, weaken the regime as much as possible. The goal should be regime change. Not by putting troops on the ground, but by creating a situation where the regime is so weak that there's a uh, there's something that happens um, something that happens internally. Yuan, have you been through an air raid before? <laughs> JJ Jigby asks. <laughs> oh God, um, yes, in 1973, and maybe after that as well, but certainly in 1973. On Yom Kippur in 1973, we were in synagogue um, for Yom Kippur, uh, and uh, the air and sirens went off. We rushed into the synagogue's air raid shelter. My father then rushed home, put on his uniform, and went to the front. We didn't see him for weeks. Um, we then went home as soon as they were all clear, and we spent the first week or so quite a bit of time in the air raid shelter for, for about a week. Um, I was, we lived in a building, a four-story building um, it, with uh, eight apartments, is that right? Six, six apartments, seven, seven apartments, seven apartments. And um, uh, I was the oldest male who, in the building, in the air raid shelter because all the other men had gone to war. And uh, I had a one-week-old sister, not the sister who's on the chat. She wasn't born yet. <laughs> uh, but I had a one-week-old sister. Um, and uh, my brother was two years younger than me. So he was 10, I was 12. And then we had a one-week-old sister with us. And uh, we were, yeah, we were in the airway shelter a lot during that war, particularly in that first week. All right, um, what else do we have? Um, yes, that was Christian. Apollo Zeus. Should US and UK jets just shoot missiles out of the air or target the launch sites as well? Well, right now, the priority has to be to shoot missiles out of the air. I mean, clearly that's what they should be doing. And then the next stage is to go after the launches, but the first stage is to prevent missiles from hitting, uh, from, from actually hitting their targets in Israel. So um, the, the next stage is retaliation. Retaliation means missile launches, missile factories, drone factories, and nuclear program. That, that would be the next phase. And again, if Israel is weak in its response, if America and the, is weak in its response, if there is a response, uh, that'll embolden not just uh, the Iranians, but it'll embolden really everybody, uh, everybody else, right? Everybody else. All right. Uh, I think we are done. I think we are done F almost five hours in. F uh, yeah, five hours in. And um, uh, Javier Millet has just put out a official statement. It's in Spanish. I can't read it, so I don't know what it says. My, my assumption is that it is a letter in support of Israel, good for and condemnation of Iran. Um, I mean... Uh, this is a huge shift in, his re in Argentinian politics. The previous president of um, Argentina, or the, uh, uh, Christina, um, what's her name? Uh, you know who I mean. Uh, was a huge supporter of Iran, and actually uh, uh, he took a suitcase full of cash 
at some point in order to cover up the fact that the Iranians were behind the bombing of the Jewish Community Center and the uh, Jewish Community Center and the uh, Israeli Embassy in uh, Argentina uh, a few years ago, Christina Kushner. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, 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 this is a huge shift. It's a good for good for Millet, uh, that is uh, that is truly uh, terrific. Um, yep. All right. Now, will the Biden administration learn anything from this? Uh, will they learn that weakness encourages um, violence? Will they learn that they should unequivocally? Uh, support Israel? We will see. We will see. And, um, you know, the only reason this, uh, this all turned out to be a non-event, or as Richard, who is not that bright, obviously, calls a snooze fest, is because Israel shot down the ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and it shot down the, uh, the drones. Uh, it's the only reason it's not a it's 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 there's no drama as a consequence of this is because Israel has a phenomenal and exceptional um, air defense system and that Hezbollah never never took part. So, all right, Dave Goodman, um, or Dave Goodman, do you see? A, a, uh, no, I said I. That's not it, Dave Goodman. Are these? Are these drones a distraction so Israel diverts its air force away so Hezbollah can have free reign to wreak havoc? No, I don't think so. I think if Hezbollah was going to strike, they would have stroken an hour ago, two hours ago. I think the fact that they did not suggest that they will not. Uh, they, are, uh, they are done. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, they have made the strategic decision not either to hold it in reserve for the next round, or because of internal Lebanese politics, Hezbollah is in no condition to actually engage with full force uh, against Israel. That is, uh, that is, my, uh, that is my assessment. <clears throat> so, I don't think it was a diversion, and I don't think you're going to see anything. That's it. I think we're done for now. I think now Iran and the rest of the world will sit back and wait to see what Israel does. And uh, based on that, we'll see what Iran decides to do as the next phase. All right, everybody. I'm saving the questions I did not get to. Um, I will promise to answer them, but uh, not now. Uh, I will do so in the near future. Um, and um, I will uh, I will be on again if something if if there's a if this news story takes a turn in the next few hours, I'll try to be back on. But I think we're done for tonight. Uh, I, I, we are all gonna stay tuned to see what Israel responds, but that won't be immediate or I'd be shocked if it was immediate. And uh, Let's, uh, and I will see you all, hopefully not tomorrow. If it's tomorrow, well, maybe, I hope tomorrow, if Israel strikes back tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow, certainly on Monday. Thank you, everybody. I, I appreciate, I appreciate the, the massive support. I appreciate you all being here. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Also, before you leave, please consider liking the show. Just press the like button. Um, and uh, that, that will uh, really elevate the profile of this show uh, within YouTube because they love, they love uh, the like stuff. We're uh, at 350 likes, so that, that's fantastic. Uh, it's a great beginning, but uh, before you leave, make sure you've liked it. And uh, I will see you all soon. And uh, for those of you in Israel... I hope uh, you get some sleep tonight. I hope everything's calmed down. And uh, I hope, uh, I hope, uh, yeah. I hope this is it. I hope this is it. All right, five hours later, I'll sign off. Talk to you all maybe tomorrow, suddenly on Monday. Bye, everybody. <laughs>